Oh my gosh, it's you and me, Mick. Hello, Miss Shoemaker. Um, <laughs> Excuse well, there me. was somebody in attendance, but they've gone. I guess just one look at my face was enough to drive them away. Who was there? Helen. Oh. I don't know who Helen is. She didn't have her last name. But Helen was there, and now she's gone. But we're recorded for posterity, just in case. There's oh, my goodness. You're recording this conversation. It starts right away. Wow, okay. I don't want to miss any of the real eloquent, philosophical, intellectual points that get made so frequently at our <laughs> Is this, so, you know what, I'm going to use this recording when I teach sarcasm. Okay, good, good. <laughs> now, I did remind you I'm ducking out for a while tonight. Yes. And I, so that would be a good time to do the economic development <laughs> 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 You know what? That is a very. Do you really? You don't think we'll get done with everything before then? Oh, we might. We might. <laughs> yeah, we we might also invent a machine that turns radioactive waste into gold nuggets. It could happen. Yeah, I I think that's actually more likely than us getting <laughs> done within the next hour tonight. <laughs> I think ancient medieval alchemy is more. All right. Yeah, no, I'm going to be careful because this is getting recorded. <laughs> you are recorded as saying you believe that ancient medieval alchemy is more likely than council cooperation. And I second that motion. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The chief is here. Nice. Uh, there's the chief. Uh, Hi, everyone. Hi. Where's my list? Hi, chief. How you doing? Hey, Chief, Chief, how you doing? <laughs> how are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, Double thumbs up. Uh, tired is definitely the word. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, how are, are you holding up? I'm, uh, I'm hanging in. Uh, it's been a long couple of days and uh, um, been a, it, it's been a long day today already. Yeah, yeah. Just got out of my last meeting a few minutes ago, so I didn't that's, have time to prepare for today. That's you. You didn't have to like run the police department all day before you have to come to this, did you? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of traffic uh, authority stuff today, and uh, Boy. A, a bunch of stuff on PAL. Uh, everything went really well, though. Good, glad Very to happy hear. With it. So, um, good. So, I, I really hope that turns into a great program. Yeah. No. We're we're, uh, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, we're moving forward. Uh, so we'll we'll see it. We just uh, I, I definitely uh, some extra personnel is going to be able to I think allow us to do it. So I'm happy for that. Ms. Renta, thank you, thank Renta. Thank you so Hi. much. Hi. Thank you so much. How are you today? I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm right. tired. I actually closed my eyes for about 15 minutes. Um, right around five till five fifteen, and boy did I go out hard. And when I woke up, whoo, it was no good, no good. Oh my friend, I'm yeah. so sorry. Still a little foggy, but let's do this. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, thank you, Mr. Caesar, Ms. Baez, nice to see Hi, you. Kath. How are you, Kath? Hey, Dom. Hello, okay. Austin. Hello. Got you, Marge. Oh, you had to go bonnetese fishing? Yes. <laughs> you were at work the other day. Um, why? Don't know why I worked the other day. Didn't work today. So weird. How that, yeah, it's the same, same webinar button each time for everybody. Yeah, I don't get it. Some folks, uh, oh, look at Miss Bonnetese out there in the that looks nice. <laughs> I know. Oof, jealous. Is that laurel back there? That is a wisteria vine. Beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, that is I nice. That I is stole nice. it from my mother-in-law like 27 years ago, and that's what it looks like now. A little piece. Marjorie, the chief cool. of police is on this call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm growing wisteria. 
No, it was the theft that was the problem. Mark. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh... <laughs> hey, Jody. Hey, Jody. Hey, Brad. Hi. Yeah, Brad's here. Miss Rubino. Good evening. Sue's here. Hey, Kristen Dolan. Kristen, hi. Adam. Yeah. Hail, hail, the gang's off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Councillor Shoemaker. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sandra. <laughs> One time, just kind of goofing around with Mr. Sendroff, I asked him if anyone mispronounced his name as Sadman Endroff. And now <laughs> I hear it all the time when I see your name, Mr. Sendroff. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I never heard that before. <laughs> now try to. Not just you. Just you. <laughs> I will right, we'll do another minute or two. Uh, Adam, do you play guitar? More. What's that, Ms. Renta? I was, I was asking Adam if he plays guitar. Not enough to say that I do. Those are my daughters, who um, ah. is really the rock star in the family. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're a rock star. star. Behind Mr. Jackson as well. Does Mr. Jackson play guitar? Uh, I play guitar just well enough to say I play guitar, um, but I moved to bass years ago. I haven't picked gotcha. it up this year, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I have a pretty good setup. <laughs> so you're not ready for the free bird. Free <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the beauty right. of it is you can you can do it easy or you can do it hard. I, can still <laughs> I like the concept of our finance director playing bass, though, setting a foundation. There you go. Upon which the rest of the band uh, can flourish. All right, we got Miss Gary. All right. Our library directors here. So where are we starting tonight? Um, you have a oh, everybody while the night is young and everybody is happy. Hello, yeah. Athena. Yes. That'll Hi, last. Athena. Sure. <laughs> um, we'll try to go uh, and kind of clear folks out. Uh, we'll start with our table items. Our unfinished department is still the police department expenditures. Right. Uh, Mr. Weber will be in and out today uh, as he is um, in transit. Um, we have the library overtime hours, the police department line, the professional technical line is a tabled item, tax office part-time cashier is a tabled item, community youth services, community ambassador programs, a tabled item, and Planning and economic development expenses minus the HEDC line, which has been eliminated. Those are our uh, items. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll get into the tabled items, try to clear those out of the way, and then um, wrap up the police uh, just so we can start um, uh, releasing folks who are here. Um, oh, good. So we got anyone else in the attendance? Not at this time. And Ms. Roy Lewis and Ms. Horsley are here. So why don't we go ahead and get started at 6.06. .06. I will call this meeting uh, out of recess at 6.06. .06. Uh, I'd like to begin with just two quick items. Uh, one, I do apologize for raising my voice last night. Uh, you know, was, the hour was late. Uh, exhaustion was there, but, you know, um, uh, not, uh, not an excuse. So we should try to focus on just speaking with our, you know, each other in a civil manner. So I do apologize for raising my voice and uh, we'll try to focus in tonight just on the numbers and producing the best budget for the town of Hamden. Uh, second item, uh, there was discussion last night about uh, the possibilities of a executive session with the ice rink because I believe there's a lot of interest in people to um, have a real thorough discussion on this item, uh, but also protect any possible interests you know, we have some areas that might be a little uh, uh, difficult to bring up in public. So what I would request from the council, uh, those who are interested in um, 
you know, having this kind of expanded privilege discussion, it might be possible. So if you could send, you know, specifically with the things that you would like to focus on, and then tomorrow I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Jackson, uh, if he's available, uh, to um, think about the what the requests of the council are to see what um, what you know what what we're looking for to discuss, and then what documentation Mr. Jackson. Um, has to share with us and if that documentation might be of a privileged nature. Um, and that I think would be the mechanism for an executive session as we want to have this discussion, but we don't want to violate any privacy rules and we don't want to you know, put the, the vendor, uh, we want to hold them accountable. We want them to be doing the best they can, uh, but we want to do so in a way that doesn't you know, violate uh, their privacy rights. Uh, so that will be tomorrow. Um, and so please during this, uh, this session, email me with your questions about the ice rink, you know, what specific information you're looking for. I'll follow up with Director Jackson tomorrow to see what documentation we have. And then, um, you know, see so we can go about scheduling that executive session. Ms. Rent, did we, did we include a possible executive session on the agenda for Monday? I'm not sure without looking. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the draft from earlier today and I just uh, probably don't remember. I'm going to grab it while we do this and add it just in case it's needed. Thank you. All right, so having said all that, um, we'll begin with our library line. The, um, the tabled item was the overtime Sunday hours there and that I believe would be Ms. Klaus leading us in that discussion. Ms. Klaus, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, I'm a little unprepared because I was just finishing my dinner, so. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> do, you, do you want me to start up while you- can, you... oh, that's okay. Uh, we can go ahead and get a motion to take that off the table. So moved. Second. Okay. And can we get a vote on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> and it's off the table, so I will open that up for discussion. And it looks like uh, Councilwoman Shoemaker has her hand up. Yes. Um, I would like to move to zero out the Sunday hours line in the library budget. Second. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Sandroff is here, I believe. I had a conversation with him about um, the potential need for warm. I'm sorry, you muted. For, for a potential need for a warming center and oh dear, in that complex, uh, Mr. Sandroff, would you uh, share your reflections on that uh, in with regard to not really needing the uh, Sunday overtime hours in the library and still having capacity for warming center if we need it. Yeah, sure. And uh, Director Kenham Klein is on as, as well. Um, but in my experience, when the governor does declare a weather emergency weather and directs towns and municipalities to either opening up cooling stations or warming stations in municipal facilities, it's usually during business hours, um, unless you know something special happens. And in that case, in the past, we have used in the Miller complex, the senior area uh, with CERT. So just historically, that's what I've, what I've observed. I think uh, Director Canham Klein was talking about just the ability for people to get out of the elements if these Sunday hours, which I think were maybe four or five hours a day, did happen to coincide in the winter or the summer and having enough staffing levels to, um, you know, have a lot of people in the library. Um, but, you know, there is cert and, you know, when there are declared weather emergencies, certain things go into uh, effect. Thank you. And uh, through you, uh, Madam Chair, um, if, if we could direct a, a question to the uh, library director, um, if she's comfortable with this move in her budget, please. I am grave it. Absolutely. Thank yes. you. I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that. Thank you. And that, that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Farmer. Uh, 
Councilman Farmer, you have your hand up. One second. Sorry about that, uh, Chairwoman. I, I appreciate it. I was having technical difficulties. Um, so, uh, uh, thank you, Director, for joining us uh, today. Uh, so, you said you were comfortable with those numbers. Is that correct? I, I just came on, so I was having audio difficulties, so I caught the tail end. You said you were okay with that change? Uh, with zeroing out the Sunday hours? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, Deliberation. I, 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 you know, you are the department head. I, I, I'm going to respect that. I, I, I won't make a motion, but I ask yeah. us to, to keep cognizant uh, of, you know, there are other patrons that that you, they use the Sunday hours to to do services, to do applications and other stuff. So I ask us to be inventive and think outside the box on how we can provide those opportunities while saving money. I don't know what that looks like. But I ask us to work with Director uh, Canham Hancline and, and ourselves to figure out how we do that. Right? We have. Um, you know, some laptops, we have other opportunities. So I ask us to be inventive and think of ways to save money uh, and try to pr uh, uh, provide those services. So I, I don't, I don't want to suggest a council president to make a committee, uh, but for us to somehow come back to this, these concerns and think about what we can do through you, Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, Councilman McDowell. Thank you. Similar comments. I, you know, Sunday hours are uh, an incredibly valuable resource, um, especially to community members first in need, and and uh, they are not cost prohibitive. Um, they are something that we can do. I recognize that um, the director has has made it clear that the staffing is not there right now, um, and that you know, this year, it would make more sense to wait. Um, out of out of uh, respect for leading her department, I will respect the, the director's um, suggestion that, it, that this, is a, this is a safe move. Um, however, I just want to make it clear that in supporting this motion, uh, it is, I think of the utmost important that, uh, utmost importance that we think about how we can set ourselves up so that this time next year, we are able to provide uh, community members with Sunday hours in a cost effective manner. Um, it's something we've been able to do in the past. So um, director, perhaps, you know, over the coming months or, or perhaps um, when we've all had enough time to rest from this exhaustive process, if you could maybe uh, think about what you would need or the support you would need um, to set up for Sunday hours for the 22-23 budget. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps that's something that we can discuss and be ready for this time next year. Uh, thank you, Director, for, for being with us and your patience over the past few days and over this process as a whole. And uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Um, President McGarry. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, speak very briefly about um, the, you know, thinking about setting a committee, I believe uh, Ms. Ken Klein may can tell us, but there's, there's organizations that um, the library has, right, about its functionality. Can you tell us what those are? Like friends? The organizations that we work with? Well, you know, like for, um, um, you know, don't you have a board or uh, oh. friends of the library? Yes, we, we have a, the Hamden Public Library does have a governing board. Um, it consists of five people right now. And um, so it'd be something that I would work with them. We also have the Friends of the Hamden Public Library. It's a little bit, um, this past year has been a little bit hard on them and it's gonna definitely be a regrouping year for that organization. 
I think um, the most important part of looking forward to next year uh, and bringing Sunday hours as a service to Hamden would be really looking creatively at our partnerships that we have with other departments in the town um, and thinking about how we could do that together. Um, I know that the board would be supported, the library board would be supportive of that. We will be hosting a community needs assessment starting in September and October. And hopefully that will also be of assistance in us figuring out where and when and how to partner with people to do Sunday hours. Yeah, thanks. That's what I was kind of thinking with, with what Mr. Farmer was suggesting. Maybe we could utilize those groups uh, to help, you know, creatively problem solve, you know, and get some of those folks who are, you know, in, in intimately involved with the library to help us out with uh, some suggestions. So thank you. You're welcome. Councilwoman Bonadies. Um, thank you. I know last year we talked a little bit about um, perhaps having like a satellite library at Keefe Center. Um, has there been any um, progress on that? And is the Keefe Center open on, on Sunday? Could that be something that could coincide library hours and Sundays at Keefe? Well, I'm glad that you brought that up because last night was our first night um, prior to joining you all last night. Um, I was at the Key Center doing our first pop-up library, and we're planning on doing that a lot more often at the Key Center. I'm not, I don't know about the Sunday hours. Perhaps Adam can address that. Sure, uh, Keith is uh, not open on the weekends okay. unless there's some kind of special event going on. Okay. Is there, what about having a satellite library there as well? Or are you gonna continue with the pop-ups? We're going to keep continuing with the pop-ups, but that is something that I hope that could be done on Sundays in other parts of the town. Um, what, parts, we're hoping, what parts are open? Does anyone know it? Well, we're also thinking of, of again, community partners, whether it's a church or okay. even a business. We now have hot spots located in six businesses in the town that's providing connectivity in um, different parts of the town. And those could be potential partners in expanding pop-up libraries as well. Okay, I would love I would love to have to see a comparison in a cost uh, between the library van, which could be driven by one person and accessed throughout communities, versus um, you know actual library hours full of with staff. So it might be interesting to compare what would be a better financial and and service to the community. Sunday hours or, or maybe the mobile library bin. So just a thought, thanks, thanks for being here and thanks for your answers. Thank you. Councilman Farmer for your second bite. Thank you, Chairwoman, uh, or Chairperson rather. Um, you know, as farmers, we love our apples. Um, I, I think taking the, the opportunity, um, you know, part of the allure to the satellite, um, the satellite uh, 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 locations is that we have issues around transportation, right? So the Keith Center serves one community, but the circular community is another, the Whitney community. Um, so there's utility to the buildings. I think this is a discussion uh, about uh, capital and figuring out what we do uh, in terms of the key center and a long-term plan, maybe talking about integrating something and maybe finding some cost savings in doing so. Uh, I bring up capital because I think it also is pertinent that it has the ability to deal with some of these things. Uh, I know uh, uh, the director has talked about re-envisioning the outside space to allow community members to interact uh, with the space. I think as we're talking about these issues that we are cognizant that we have more than one way as the fiscal authorities, as the purse string of the town to come up with inventive ways with department heads to figure out how we solve some of these issues 
and bring down the cost uh, and bring a greater value to the taxpayer. So I just wanted to re remind us of that. Uh, I, 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 you know, I asked about capital budget this year, but I've also asked from the administration a numerous time of what the capital requests from different department heads was last year and the last year before so that we can set our priorities and we can see what things departments are looking for so that we can figure out if we can envision different ways to spend that capital. Um, the last thing I'll say on this, uh, because this was the main reason we tabled this item, was being an emergency warming shelter, right? Being an opportunity, a place to warm people. I, I hope that we can be judicious with ENC uh, as this year we saw 50, 60 people on a nightly basis mm -hmm. asking for housing assistance, temporary housing assistance compared to past years with 12 and eight people. So I hope we are, 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 are cognizant of that and think of that. Again, I won't make any motions on how to spend more money. But I want my colleagues to be cognizant of this so that for whatever reason, if we get an influx like we did this year, that we will be able to handle it. Uh, and again, we're not looking at the front line or second line responders like the library uh, to pick up that slack uh, through you, Chairwoman. Is there any other discussion on Capital Sunday? Okay, seeing none, we'll put this up for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'm still opposed. Okay, I see one opposed and any abstention? Okay, that passes. And I believe we still have the overtime. Is that right, uh, President McKinney? That was the line. Yeah, the overtime was Sunday hours. The overtime, overtime Sunday hours. Thank, yep. Thank you. Okay. So I think that is it for library. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I just want to say, I think that it's amazing your perseverance and your stamina. So thank you for what you're doing and have a good thank night. And I hope and a short night. Thank you for what you do. <laughs> thank you for what you do. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you, Ms. Have, good night. have a good night. Thank you. Uh, next is our tax office part-time cashier position was tabled. And in the tax office, uh, Ms. Kristen Dolan uh, will be guiding our discussion. That's page 191 in the budget book. Sorry. Caught me by surprise. Who's next after this? After that will be community youth services okay. and economic development. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, can I please have a motion to untable the most the part-time cashier issue. So move, Chairwoman. Second. Thank you. Oh. All right, Ms. Dillon, can you tell us what page this is? Yes, it is page 192. Okay, discussion on the part-time cashier position. Any discussion? Councilman Farmer. Thank you, Chairwoman. Just uh, again, as recent weeks, uh, numbers and things have been off. So I just want to, to be quadruple sure that the job description for this cashier is correct and it will cover all the duties that we need so we do not end up in debates and discussion with the bargaining unit on the scope of work that we are expecting through you, Chairwoman, to Director Jackson. 
Uh, I, uh, I will extend uh, the apologies from uh, the tax collector. Uh, she was prepared to speak to this earlier in the week, but as schedules got, uh, uh, got moved around, she moved a vacation around, uh, and I didn't think it was fair to ask her to move a vacation around twice. Um, so, uh, so I am here on her behalf. Uh, it is quadruple, quintuple checked, uh, Mr. Farmer. The job description is, uh, is, is very solid. Uh, it's been around for a while. Uh, and um, if I may, the, the notion of fairly, and, and this is coming from someone who, you know, on my odyssey over the last few years, I ran the largest tax collection agency in the state of Connecticut to $21 billion. Um, fair and efficient tax collection is something that has been uh, written into my DNA and I cannot, uh, it, is, it is astonishing to me that this year uh, we, we've collected $200 million with four people and we're at around $215 million in this budget. Um, sometimes you need horsepower to make things run. And so I, 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 I dramatically support this part-time cashier. Just to follow up to that, Director Jackson, uh, I'm sure it would be hard. Um, but is there is there any quantitative uh, uh, value that that you can uh, uh, guesstimate that we will bring in because of this position? And if not, next year, can you attempt to update us? with how that value added to the department. Is that a fair request uh, of the finance department? Uh, it is a fair request and I can, I, can, I can almost guarantee that um, motor vehicle uh, uh, receipts will increase by funding this position. Um, back tax collections will increase by funding this position. Now, can you draw a straight line uh, between the position to those numbers? No, you can't, but you can, you can draw a dotted line. Thank you, Director Jackson. Uh, uh, and I appreciate your thoughtfulness to the questions through you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Uh, Councilman McDowell. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, yeah, I keep talking about return on investments. I, after a lot of thought and review on this position, I, I, um, I am, I am uh, <laughs> maybe begrudging is a strong word, but I, I'm not happy about adding an, another position. But I, I think this one we ought to add. Um, I do look forward to seeing that dotted line. I think that's critically important. Uh, I wish we could see an estimate now. Um, but recognizing that we are, uh, we have days, not weeks left. Um, I, I, I would, I would settle for justification of maintaining the position next year. Um, so uh, sometimes you have to put up and see, see if it, if it generates revenue. I think this will. Um, I think that both on a on a state and a federal level, we have seen the impact of of uh, underfunding our revenue generating uh, mechanisms. And so I wanna be careful about not doing that on a municipal level as it can have uh, an adverse impact in, in, in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So I do see, uh, it does make logical and, and financial sense to me that this position will end up generating, or I should say returning more than we are investing in it. Um, and so I will be supporting it and I encourage my colleagues to support it as well. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Councilman McDowell. Uh, seeing no further discussion, let's call for the vote. All those in favor of accepting this position, part-time cashier for $20,510.88, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Any abstention? Did you get that, Ms. Sure. I believe I saw two opposed, Ms. Letmore and Ms. Dolan. Chairwoman, uh, uh, I was having functional difficulties with my camera. I was also opposed. Okay, three opposed. Okay, I believe that concludes the tax office. Yes, it does. Thank you very much, uh, Kristen Dolan. Our next uh, tabled item is community use services and arts line, the community ambassador program line. Hello. Um, so getting over to that page, which I have already bookmarked. Um, it's page 27. Um, the, can I have someone motion to, um, open up these expenses? Do I need to so move, uh, to oh, take it off the table? Take this off I the move. table. Yeah. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. It's off the table. All right. Um, the last time we were visiting this line, there was going to be some more information, if I remember correctly. Um, are you ready to tell us something, Director Smith, or do you want us to get into the discussion of it? Um, sure. If, if uh, you recall, um, Ms. Rubino was not able to join us um, at our last meeting. So um, I, I did want to make sure that, that she was here with us to, to discuss this. Um, she and I have discussed it further. And um, as you recall, we, when asked about this line, um, the thought process behind uh, that the mayor was looking for was um, of having a, a group, I would say, a, you know, a group of people um, who could be considered ambassadors, predominantly of the Keep Center, um, but for the town, of course, um, at events, um, at, at different uh, parks, et cetera. Um, when Ms. Rubino and I discussed it, uh, we had seen it as a more robust program, if you will, that would include the community ambassadors, but would be more of a continuation of the Summer Youth Employment Program um, and youth mentoring throughout the rest of the year. And I, I would like to actually hand it over to Ms. Rubino because she can certainly explain it better than I can. This is her area of expertise. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks, Julie. Um, so first of all, I, want, I appreciate the fact that the mayor um, does want to invest in our youth and uh, the council as well. Um, and I'm here to share how we can make the most of this funding, this potential funding, if approved. Um, so the program, as Ms. Smith said, it, the community ambassadors would be a component of the program. The program really would be youth opportunities. And uh, there would be four components of the program. So there would be outreach and recruitment, empowering youth um, through advocacy and advisory boards, which the youth would be um, advocating for themselves with mentors, uh, community and volunteer placements, and then finally, youth employment and training, which would be an extension of our summer um, youth employment and training program. And this is where the community ambassadors um, would be placed in that youth employment and training program. So um, how we would spend the money is we would look to hire a full-time program specialist or other title um, person in youth services. Currently, as you know, as you can see from the budget that in our department, it's myself and a clerk typist. Those are the only full-time people in youth services. So if we really want to invest in our youth, we have to stop with the part-time intern, I mean, still do the part-time and interns, but if we want sustainable, high quality programs, we need full-time staff, at least one person. Um, you know, having a full-time person 
with benefits um, helps to ensure that person's going to be around for a while. And it's as with any job, it's all about the relationships, right? Uh, especially youth. If we have people coming and going, the, the, the young people and their parents don't get to know the folks that are working in the Youth Service Bureau. And, um, you know, that affects how our programs work. So there it is. <laughs> the, the end to be continued. Okay. All right. So this opens up something, a new discussion, which is an addition of a position. Um, so I will let the council folks start this conversation. Councilman Farmer, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairwoman, and thank you, uh, uh, Director Rubino. Uh, uh, I, I say often fam to people, but in many ways, I, I do see you as family. Um, I, so I guess with how we spoke on this line, um, you know, if there is a position created, right, and, and it's a full-time position, what is the breakup? Because the understanding was that this, some of this money or a good portion of this money would go to hiring youth around the town. So, you know, you shared with us your vision. What, what, what's your, are you looking for the full amount for a position? Are you looking for part of it for a position? What was the intent and how, what, what does that allow us to envision through you, Chairwoman? Um, so the whole 75,000 would not go to the position. Um, a portion, I mean, I haven't gone through the numbers and I, I have to look, you know, if this is approved um, through the town hall union contract to see what kind of positions where it might fit and where that salary range would be. But I'm thinking like between 40, 45,000 to start with benefits. Um, and then there still would be funding, you know, so then benefits are about 20%. Um, and there still would be money left for youth stipends and hourly wages. And remember, during the school year, kids are in school. So they're not, we're not looking for full time jobs for these kids, we're looking for part time. In addition, um, DCF always has funds for the youth that are involved in foster care, that are in foster care um, living situations. So there are some pockets of money for youth, um, for youth jobs. For instance, this summer, we're going to be taking on some youth um, that have, are on probation. So the... Um, CCSD has funding to pay the youth, but not to pay an adult. So we have a challenge, you know, uh, placing these kids because they have more challenge. They have more challenges, um, you know. So it's going. You need more adult supervision. Let's be real about that. Um, and the same thing, you know, with. Um, with youth that are that are involved in the the DCF Western Care System, they have additional needs. Um, and so this would be a thirty five. So this would be a full time position. Thirty five hours uh, is the intention, if I understand correctly, through you, Chairwoman. That is correct. And um, yes, and if, if any of you recall, we did have a full-time person as an outreach counselor um, that moved away for a job in 2016, and that position was never filled. Um, and, and that was a grant-funded position too. The town ended up you know, paying for benefits. And I understand, I, hey, listen, I live in Hamden, I'm a taxpayer. I know, you know, I have a pension. I've worked for the town for almost 28 years. I know that there are a lot of costs involved and long-term as well. But I really think 
that this is such an important position. Jobs, it's all about jobs, right? Julie and I were talking earlier about, you know, what are the, the main issues that could solve the food, the heating, the diapers? It's having good paying jobs, affordable housing, you know, health care, child care. So jobs, that's the number one thing. When people have a decent paying job, a lot of things fall in place. I mean, this is, you know, I'm just reiterating what you all know. And having a jobs program year round, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a no brainer. It really, not no brainer as far as funding, but that job would have a lot of impact and it offer a lot of prevention, you know, keeping kids busy in a positive way. So important. Last year we had um, about five teens that were in the juvenile review board and we placed them in jobs and there was no recidivism after they um, had their job, you know, after, even though they were only getting like a hundred dollars a week, they really appreciated it and it made a difference in their life. And, you know, so far they, they haven't um, repeated what they did in the past, so. Well, I, I thank you, uh, Director Rubino, for joining us tonight. Um, with the context, uh, this is something uh, more in favor, uh, uh, to be honest, when it was before us, before I was vehemently against it. So, you know, context uh, does so much. So thank you for joining us tonight uh, and giving us that context and perspective through you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Councilperson Farmer, Councilwoman Shoemaker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, uh, Director uh, Rubino, it, um, I, I really appreciate your passion for this, um, uh, this process. And in the backup, it said part-time community ambassador facilitator. And now we're talking full-time. And instead of it being proposed as a position, it's proposed in an expense line. So what I'm guessing is that your thinking has had to evolve kind of over time about how to handle this. And, and that seems to be reflected in what's before us. So um, I, I guess I would be more comfortable if I saw the expenses uh, divided out, but um, I don't want to oppose this because I think it's a wonderful idea. So uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, I, I want to vote for this, and then I want to request that we get um, a follow-up with kind of the job description and the salary, and um, and, and and what the rest, what the you know, then the the rest of it goes to pay youth in their jobs, and what what grants get leveraged by having this position in place. It, just because of the way it's presented in the budget, I feel compelled to request that kind of follow-up. So I, I wanna vote for this enthusiastically and I really look forward to hearing how your thinking further develops and you get this thing up and running. So that's where I'm at with it. And through you, Madam Chair, um, I, I, I'd like to make that request and offer that reflection. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Shoemaker. Um, so I had put myself on the list here to ask a few questions, um, like where do the current youth services, youth summer youth program dollars go? But I think my, I think I'm more curious about. Originally, I thought we had to create a position into the position section of this, but I think because we have to wait till we get grant funding that might subsidize this there's an opportunity for grant funding to subsidize this, possibly. Maybe we should just keep it open-ended so that you guys can figure that out or do we have to write the position into this budget book so that they can hire for it? Can someone answer that question from the administration or the leadership who maybe know that? Uh, if I could uh, jump in, Councilwoman, if it is written into the budget, even if it is identified as partially grant funded, um, our 
obligation is to either pay the salary or if those grant funds are not available to um, terminate the employment of the, uh, of the individual. My question is, if I don't put it into the positions, will they still be able to hire someone? Yes. Okay, if I leave it as is, it'll be okay. Okay, I got yeah. count. Um, Director Smith actually wants to say something. Go ahead and then it's Farmer and then Dolan. We cannot hear you. No, but we see your lips moving. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I don't know why all of a sudden my internet decided to be spotty. It hasn't been ever, but hey, who knew? Um, I just, I wanted to speak to um, the, um, I wanted to speak to the um, uh, idea of being able to use uh, Am I frozen again? I think I'm frozen again. You're frozen, but we can. You're frozen, hear you. but we can hear you. Oops, sorry. You might have disconnected. Okay, I think that we're gonna wait till maybe someone logs off your internet because you're in and out. I know. I. I <sighs> but it's okay. We're, I'm gonna have these two council people speak, and then maybe everything will shake itself out. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Councilperson Farmer. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, uh, hopefully, you shake loose of that curse. Um, I, I, I guess, uh, uh, Chairwoman, I, through you, uh, to you, I, I, I would love to see this reflected in the positions. I think oftentimes, um, you know, we have collective wisdom, but I think sometimes we assume that we're going to know the intentions of what the previous council did. And there's always a lag where there wasn't clear communication and there's things in the budget that don't make sense. So I think it would make more sense for us to create a position, uh, one, not only for stability, so that it, it's clear that we're trying to make it a priority to have an employee in this position, but two, so that we don't get lost or confused about where this is. And then at some point, someone makes a motion down the line. I could easily see, you know, 10 years down the line, a brand new me gets in my first year and I'm like, cut that. And I don't realize that's actually a job position, right? So I, I think I would, I would feel more comfortable us having that reflected uh, in a job uh, position, especially if we're going to have benefits so that we can know that and see that uh, even if we, you know, are, are waiting for grant funding and, and we put it at a lower, we, we, you know, potentially put in a higher number, but fund it partially, I'd feel more comfortable with that for us to know that rather than to just have it in this line through you, Chairwoman, uh, uh, to all of our colleagues, uh, but to answer your question. Okay, heard. Um, Councilwoman Dolan. Thanks, I, I think I'm all set, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna check back in with Director Smith. Are you doing better? I see you can't turn your camera off. Sometimes it helps. Yeah, I'm going to keep my camera off. All right. What did you want to tell us about um, subsidi grant funding subsidizing this position? Um, all I wanted to say was that um, uh, Ms. Rubino has been incredibly um, successful in uh, procuring grant funding. Um, if you, you know, if you look at her, uh, the budget presentation that we had um, earlier in the budget season, um, she has procured, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars in grant funds. And this, the position that was previously in this department was almost entirely grant funded, I think, with the exception of the fringes. So I, I really do feel that, um, especially with the help of 
the newly created position in finance and the part-time grants person that we will be um, very uh, likely to find grant funding for not only this position, but this program. And um, Ms. Rubino and I have been on numerous webinars over the past couple of weeks about the, um, uh, the recovery money coming in. Um, and this definitely fits within the scope of, um, of recovery without question. All right, thank you for that information. Um, back to Councilwoman Shoemaker. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a quick clarifying question. Does it impact the ability to attract grant funding for this if the um, position is in an expense line versus in a, an employee line in the, in the budget? I mean, does that make a difference in your ability to attract grant funding for this? Are you asking me that or? Yeah, uh, whoever uh, can answer it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, the thing with grants is you, you, most cases you can't supplant funds. So if you did put it into the budget and the town starts paying it, and I know that I'm probably hurting myself by saying this, but the truth is if the town started paying this, I wouldn't be able to get a grant to then pay for the position. That's if the town is yeah that's yeah. what i'm trying to find out yes that wouldn't that that would be very difficult so, um so is it better for us to leave it in a program line Does no it, i'm sorry I, I agree with um councilman farmer that it's important to have it in the salaries line again i mean if you look at the youth services look okay. at our line two positions. I'm not even asking for an additional position, technically. I'm asking to just fill the position that was vacated how many years ago? Five, six years ago. Um, but, you know, with Councilwoman, with what you're bringing about, it's, you know, maybe look for grant funds now and with the recovery funds, you know, perhaps we can, um, and I think we should know that, get that information soon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but just the fact that, you know, you're considering this, I do appreciate, you know, all of you listening to us and, um, and taking it seriously. Uh, thank you, that, that answers my question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. That was good um, information. Um, Councilwoman Bonadies. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sue and Julie, for that presentation. It's very, it's a very compelling reason to have a full-time position. I understand when, when you have benefits and you have a, a regular salary, you're going to pour yourself into a job versus something temporary or part-time or an intern. It's really that, that commitment is, is there where it's not um, otherwise, <clears throat> but I do have a question um, about the the summer employment. Who who is supervising those youths during that time of the year? If you haven't had someone, and you're looking for someone to then follow through with that in the other part, other times of the year. So who's filling those that spot now? So we have three adult supervisors in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, Rosalind Lobo, has been with Youth Services for 40 years. And um, they, they all work as paras in um, two work in New Haven public schools and one works at the high school. So in the summer, they're part time. They work for about six weeks under the grant. Um, you know, but it does take, in order to run a good program, you need solid adult supervision. And you know to be um, a like a job coach really um, to the kids so that it's not all on the um, the worksite supervisor and there is support extra support for the youth. Who's the worksite? Well, not who like what who fills that position, but there's a worksite supervisor that's employed by 
um, no, so the work work sites are the, the set they're separate entities so it could be you know the engineering department it could be tj maxx it could be you know oh, okay yeah outside so, entity not employed by us but employed by the employer well we would employ them but they would be the place site so that's what we do in the summer so the town okay. pays you through the grant but then the um, work site provides training and, you know, um, the experience, the work experience. Okay. And then I, I'm noticing in community services, there is a community service technician and a program specialist there. So I'm looking at some of the salaries. Is that a comparable salary to the position you're looking for? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, we're looking for some parity, so we would probably look to those, one of those positions um, as a guide. Okay, so those salaries are, um, this year, currently, they'll be 54 and 63, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, entry level would be, um, so I, I just think we need to be cognizant of that. Um, what could I ask you what the salary was of the person who left in 2016? Um, I don't recall. Don't quote me on it, but I, I think it was mid 40s. Okay. okay. But okay. she had for 10 years. She had been with the town for 10 years too. And but it's also 2021 now. Right. So five five years later. Um I'm I'm gonna I'm sitting on the fence. So I'm gonna just let others speak who've got their hands up and I guess we'll come around to the vote in some time. Thank you. Okay, so I put myself on the list, um, uh, Councilperson Farmer. So after I was gonna make a motion, I'm making a motion to add a position to the youth services division of this budget um, named program specialist and to be that youth outreach coordinator, program specialist. And I was going to make the line, I would like the salary to be at 45, um, but I don't know if we have to cushion it so they can get their benefits or whatnot, but I'm gonna say 45 to start this discussion. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we've talked about this a lot. Okay, what do you have to say about it? Go ahead, Councilperson Farmer. Uh, just two, I, I had two points of clarification. Uh, uh, in terms of hours, how many hours uh, are you putting into that uh, position? I would say 35 is my intention oh. full time. Okay, great. Um, and then just a, a point of clarification uh, to Councillor Bonadies um, in terms of the vendors, uh, Director Rubino was talking about uh, vendors like Marrakesh would be the uh, type of entities that we would pay to be a work placement specialist who would do training and working with youth um, uh, as well as uh, working with individuals with disabilities. Um, so those would be the uh, type of specialists uh, that the director was talking about through you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Is there any other comment from? Okay, uh, President McGarry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I've had to step away a few times. Uh, the motion is to add a new position. The motion is to take the money from the community ambassador line and put 45k into a new position. So the so. Hmm. I, if that wasn't clear, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I've been. Um, having to do other things. Um, yes. Um, I'm just sorry, I'm not very up to speed on this one. Um, no worries. The, um, the presentation was that they would like to have a youth outreach coordinator, youth outreach person um, that is a program specialist for the youth summer employment to be expanded. So instead of having part-time persons who work on this, it'd be one person who worked full-time, who was able to expand the youth summer pro employment program, and then also be able to work with us year round so that youth are not getting into trouble. 
So, and we would still have kids getting jobs. And we would have more kids getting jobs. I like more kids getting jobs. So we, my motion is to put 45K from this number into positions, and then they have another 30 to give stipends. Okay, thank you. Was that clear? Does anyone, anyone else want to clarify? Okay. I just want to clarify the stipends. Where, where, who, where, what? $5,000 that is currently in the community ambassador line program, a portion of it they're saying should be a position and the other portion should go towards those kids that are now joining the program. So oh, I thought that I thought it was going for programming, programming. Well, the programming is to give the students stipends. So when they go out to the work sites, they give the students like $100 a week to work at those work sites instead of, you know, Marrakesh paying them we give them a hundred dollars like oh good job working here's your check as if they're you know in the workforce and getting that experience so we call it a stipend but they're working hours and we're keeping them okay. busy and then teaching them something okay okay um councilwoman horsley had had her hand up for a while uh yeah so i uh, i really support this effort i i guess i wonder if there's not more flexibility for the department if we leave it as is, because if we add a certain amount to um, a position for a certain number, then perhaps they can't find someone, et cetera, for that salary. And I just wonder if the department could speak to whether it's better to leave it as is for this year. And then if someone is identified, then for next year, we can add a position, et cetera. I just want um, to be restrictive for how they can move forward with this plan. Well, I think if if I could have maybe a few days to really um, get this program, you know, flesh it out a little more. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a few days. Um, and so that's why I'm wondering if we can just leave it like it is um, and then you can work with it to to move forward as you need. I mean, could it is we not more restrictive, I guess, is the question. So could we not, um, what Councilwoman Baez suggested is put a set amount in and then, you know, kind of amend it as if we need to. I know that there have been amendments um, to the budget often. And it wouldn't be a huge difference. It might just be, you know, okay, it's, you know, it starts at $44,600, you know, it, it would just be some minor adjustments. But I think that her suggestion of 45 is kind of really where it might sit. And we could, if I could jump in, oh, yay, my, my computer's working. <laughs> um, uh, we could certainly come back, <clears throat> come back to the council if, you know, I, well, obviously we would need to come back to the council if, as Sue said, um, to amend it, or if we found, no, this isn't, you know, we need to tweak it a little bit. But um, I think what Councilwoman Baez has said is a, is a really good framework to work off of. And if we need to adjust it, certainly we would come back to the council for your approval. Okay, that makes sense. So um, I will be supporting this and uh, I'm assuming that either way you're gonna have to come back to us. So I uh, just wanna make sure it suits the best thing for the department. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Councilperson McGarry. You're muted. You're I think muted. Council, thank you. I think Councilwoman Horsley's line of inquiry just kind of settled this for me and Ms. Smith's uh, answer. Um, and, but while I was just thinking when Ms. Fias mentioned the stipends or explained stipends before, um, so I, I think if we put this in, if you guys could, could investigate, but we do stipends in other departments um, for folks to take care of work without creating position. So maybe that's something you can consider too. Um, you know, stipend one of the folks, the pre-existing positions. Uh, but, you know, I am very much for... Uh, uh, you know, getting, getting kids working. So, um, so I'll be supporting it. And I think, you know, if you guys could investigate how to best make this work, you know, love the idea of jobs programs, 
you know, the position is tough, but uh, so I'll support this and hopefully you can come back with a really uh, well-developed um, idea and, and an we can amend. Thank Just you. to be clear on the stipends, because I, I, I understood uh, Councilwoman Bonnety's concern, because I know what the word stipend brings up for a lot of people. This is very different than the stipends you guys are used to hearing about. Um, th these are, are making sure that we are, quite frankly, um, helping a lot of small businesses here in town. Um, and it really is sort of a much more of a, in a lot of ways, a business outreach and teaching our youth how to be out in the workforce. And they do, um, a lot of the kids do go and work with some of our, um, you know, small businesses and learn from people who've started the business right here in Hamden about how they started those businesses. So it really is, um, it, while it's great for the kids, it's also really great for, um, it's the town supporting the businesses through this program. Um, it really is, uh, you know, kind of that cliched win, win, win. Right, and, and just to note that, um, just to be clear, it's not necessarily stipends. We pay the minimum wage in the summer. So we would probably continue paying the minimum wage, um, but we do have an option of paying stipends as well. Um, but it does, it, it helps a lot of the businesses and the town departments too. All right, um, thank you. Councilor Mc, McDowell. Thank you, Chairwoman. I just wanted to inquire about the rate. Um, can, can I have a little bit, and I know we already discussed it a little bit, but, but if we can just focus on it for a minute. Um, the rate, is there, is there, what, how did we get to this particular rate for this position? Um, I mean, I looked at what the mayor had put in the 75,000 and my first thought was, gee, for that amount, we can have a full-time person with benefits and still be able to pay the teens. Um, and, and also, you know, there are, um, at the end of the summer, there's always money left over, Workforce Alliance grants. And last year I was able to, you know, extend into a fall session, which I actually did myself because I didn't have my summer staff. Um, but, you know, those funds, so we could really, um, finesse a lot of different grants to supplement this. So does the, the 45,000, that's just the position, yeah. right? Or is that? That's just the position. Okay. That's and if I could jump in as well, Councillor uh, McDowell, um, I think one of the reasons why um, uh, Ms. Rubino was looking at that particular number is that that is um, a, a pretty common um, starting wage for um, the town hall union. Uh, so that's, you know, and I don't, I don't know the steps and all of that stuff, but um, that, that is a, that is a, um, that yeah. Is, okay. That, that's I mean, it shakes out to about $25 an hour. So if that's what we're saying, the union is going to need us to start at, it seems a little high for an intro rate for this, but if it's, if it's the going rate for the position, I have, I have, I have no position from which to know what a, what a reasonable going rate for this position would be, nor, you know, I haven't refreshed myself on the union contract. So in that particular union contract, obviously we've, we've just gone over the police one. Um, so if, if you are saying that that is the, the going rate for this, and that's, that's a fair and accurate rate, both for the prospective employee and for the town, um, happy to support it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Person Farmer. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman. I, I just wanted to, I, I'm in support of this. Um, I just wanted us to be cognizant if we do that to make sure that we reflect in the description the amount of money that we intend to use for stipends or salary so that way um, there's no confusion down the line so um, I don't know maybe director is director Jackson with us or maybe oh okay sorry I did not see you on my screen for a second 
uh, uh, Director Jackson, what would make uh, most, uh, I'm not even sure if we can add to the description, is that more of a department thing or would we, would, should we create a separate line for the stipends? Do, would that be more appropriate to delineate that through a description? What would make most sense uh, uh, in, in your uh, uh, wisdom, Director Jackson? So um, the description is really from the mayor to the council. The budget does not incorporate the description, it incorporates the numbers. Um, so, you know, it becomes part of the historical archive. Um, I think if you, if you, I, I mean, it, it kind of depends if you split it up into stipend and uh, some sort of salary, uh, then you're kind of locked into those, those levels. So if you need another $1,500 to make the salary work, um, because that works with the with the union contract, or that's what it takes to recruit a, a quality candidate. Um, the department will have to come back to you um, to transfer and and make that happen. Um, so, so for maximum flexibility, it should stay like this. If you want to, if you want to make sure um, that over the course of time people remember this action, then you should split it up. And and give it a and and give it its own name, uh, so that it it exists in the in the true budget books uh, and and are uh, historically recognized. Uh, I, I, I I I would encourage us then to like put it in the description so that next year we can remember and then once they're. Uh, is more, once we get into the flow of things to make that concrete change so that, you know, there's gonna need to be some flexibility as we figure out stuff. Eventually, I, I feel that we'll get into a rhythm and a groove even with grants where we, we, we can make that more concrete. But if we can suggest to the administration to put that in the description, so that we can give that maximum flexibility, uh, but at the same time uh, have a, a better institutional uh, memory about this when we come back to it. Um, so so I'd, I'd to change the name of the Community Ambassador Program to Youth Opportunities, but I'm not there yet. Oh, so okay. This does exactly what you're saying. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll stop talking and, and, and let you make the motion, Chairwoman. Thank you. All right, so we're in the middle of the motion to move $45,000 from the current community ambassador program line to a positions line for a youth specialist into the, sorry, program specialist into the youth services. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're ready to take the vote on this. Are all, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Okay, it looks like it passes. I only saw one opposed. Miss Renta, were you able to see? I saw one opposed as well. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on. Uh, my second motion is to change the name of line 12002-0670-V to youth opportunities with the remainder of $30,000 in it. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, we can take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay, that line is now called youth opportunities. Okay, um, is there anything else that we had to vote on in here? I don't think so. I believe there was an, another item. Uh, I don't think we have to vote on anything. I can't remember if we table, but I believe there's another item. Uh, what I have on the list is Community Youth and Arts Line Community Ambassador Program. Okay, that's what's on that tabled list, um, 
thing also, and I don't see any notes of anything else that's outstanding. So I have any other notes. Uh, we can, uh, Chairwoman, I think it makes more sense to close it. And if anything, we have all year. We can always revisit everything, right? right. Do we, oh, what's going on, President McGarry? The only thing, did we do the switcheroo of the warming center and the food bank? Oh, thank you. I'm trying to re recall. Where is that switch switcheroo supposed to occur? It was uh, line 0709 and line 0726. They were switched. Uh, the, yeah. the numbers were switched. You know, I could add that they're switched in the budget book, but they're correct in Munis. So we, we don't have to? Well, I'm not sure. I, um, maybe Director Jackson could. Uh, I mean, it would be good to straighten them out. Sure. <laughs> well, let's just do it. Would that. be preferred. I, yes. I'd yeah, like to make ahead. a motion to pull a switcheroo uh, and change line zero seven zero nine to seventy thousand dollars in line zero seven to six food bank to thirty five thousand dollars. Thank you. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? No, okay, let's make the vote for the switcheroo. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those against? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. All right, that should, do I have to vote to close this or we just close? We're good, because those were just table items. Okay. Yeah, we're good, because those were table items. Let's move on to economic development slash planning and zoning. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rubino. I'm so Thank happy. You, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Have a great night. And thank you for all the work that you guys do. Appreciate thank it. You your work. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is uh, planning and economic development. Okay. I'm going to be honest with this one. I'm going to need a reminder. Let's see this table to item list. There's item what well, it's all the expenses for planning and economic development god lord of mercy um do we have representatives yeah we do hi eric johnson's here are we going to have curtis eatman with us today no okay that's all right um yeah, so curtis couldn't uh couldn't make it sorry that's all right um so do i have to open up the expenses someone moved to open up the expenses for this department we have to take them off the table Okay, let's move to take these off the table. How about um, second? Yes, all those in favor to untable this. So moved. Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Nope. Okay, we're getting right to discussion. All right, council persons who have something to say about the current expenses inside the planning and zoning and or economic development budget. But let's concentrate on economic development because we kind of already did planning and zoning. What page was that, Chairwoman? It is page 35. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think Councilperson McDowell put up his hand and then Dolan. Ms. Bias, I just want to, Ms. Gary's not with us, is she? Was did you did you lead this when we were doing it? I led it when we were doing it before, because remember okay. you were in the car, Kath was abstaining and Miss Gary was in transit as well. And I kind of just swung right back into it, but I didn't check. She's not in here. I don't, I don't believe so. I was just double checking. Okay. All right. If she comes in, I'll definitely hand it over if she'd like it. Um, okay. So are people on this? Oh, McDowell, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um... We, we are speaking to the entire department at this moment, right? Yeah. Where's the specific line? E expenses. Expenses. To, to the okay. expense line in the economic development budget as submitted. Yes. Right. Thank you. And will we at any point be going back to positions or that's been complete, right? We, that did, been completed. we did complete the positions right. here. Cool. I, so perhaps this isn't the best point to speak, but if nobody objects to avoid us, having to go back to positions later um in the essence of time i'd like to just get out my comment now um if someone does object i'll save it and i'll go back to it later when we go over everything um i i wanted to remark we've received a number of comments uh from 
uh, individuals in the community, um, notably a couple members of, of uh, one of our commissions that are concerned about the combination of the two positions. Um, and I wanted to remark on that for a moment uh, because that, that did pass and we, that is what we currently have in our budget. I've spoke to two members of the Economic Development Commission over the last day, and um, I, I stood by my support for the shift specifically because uh, I, there's, there's a lot of reasons. First and foremost, uh, uh, I suppose I, I can call you director now, Director Johnson, um, incoming Director Johnson. Uh, his resume and his experience certainly, I think, meet the qualifications that we look for in an economic development director. Um, so I'm happy to support him in that role and support him in, in any way that, that I can or that we can as a body. Um, so I want to speak to that clearly and directly. I do believe that the qualifications are there and that, that we have a good candidate for that position and that that role will be adequately fit, uh, filled in terms, of, in terms of qualifications. The other concern that came from members of the commission were whether or not the, uh, the role would be, there's a lot to do, right? There's a lot to do in both departments. Um, and so there were concerns whether or not those two positions would be able to be adequately done uh, by one individual. Um, I, my expression was that I felt that the support was there, that the department was adequately built out, um, and that I felt that, you know, the pieces were there to enable Director Johnson to be able to, uh, to, to do the role and to fulfill it adequately. Um, if I can kick it to you, Director Johnson, I, I don't believe we spoke specifically to this. Can you speak to how you, uh, uh, how you plan on, they're both important roles, right? Can you speak to your ability to make sure that both are addressed and, and adequately handled? Uh, th th thank you, Council Person. Um, I, I will say that I, uh, and being at both the Planning and Zoning Commission and also the Economic Development Commission meeting earlier this week, um, I heard some of those sentiments as well. Um, I, I think that they are, they are, they are fair comments given um, the timing of which the decisions were made. Um, and what my response, at least to the Planning and Zoning Commissioner, was that um, you know it's it's reasonable to expect that I would outline a plan for how the departments would function collectively with a series of priorities that are consistent to what was been previously discussed. Realistically speaking, within the lat within the next thirty days, um, I, I think from a, from a philosophy standpoint, I will say that, that candidly, right now um, you have a economic development department that has a, a director and a part-time sustainability person that has no other staffing in it. So part of it is that you have to build a department up. I think the best way to do that in the current framework is to make sure that the department is aligned with the larger strategic goals that are established um, for the town through the planning department. So while I, I will say, now this might not be a forever solution, right? Because like any business, you modify things as you grow. I think this is a smart solution given where the town is and how we need to structure our priorities to think about where and how we're going to grow. But I also think that the staff additions that were approved on Saturday in terms of identifying one new staff person that's gonna focus primarily on um, small business related items will be helpful to make sure that we have transparency and connectedness to the community while we're trying to develop and implement plans for larger successes that are based upon a set of shared priorities. So uh, I know it's a lot of work. Um, you know, I, that, that kind of comes with the territory. Um, but, but I do think that I can clearly articulate how both would work and then how both operate within the Statutory, require, statutory requirements is established by the planning department, but also the larger, broader economic development goals that, are, that, that the town with the council and the mayor are looking forward to achieve. Uh, 
sorry to sound so, sorry not to give you a lot of details, but I do think um, we can do that. And then I would like to have the opportunity to come back and in large and small discussions, go through those details with you, because I do think that there are very specific things that we should be trying to attack and get done. Um, I just not sure if this is the proper forum to have those conversations without other details. And I, I'm going to have to, to jump in because you know, we are on the expenses. Yep. You know, that, that's what was table that's been brought off the table. So and, can I wrap up my remarks and we can move well, on? Well, you had your say, well, yeah, let's wrap this up so we can move on. Uh, but I thought you, it was a good point to make and I wanted to hear Mr. Johnson's response to that. But you know, we're on the expenses now. Yeah, I want to I want to stay specifically on the budget and the move. And I, again, this is to avoid me coming back to this later, which would take longer. Um, so anyway, uh, certainly reasonable, you know, uh, concerns from commission members. I appreciate you being willing to speak to that on the record. Um, you know, would be amazing to have two of you, but we just don't. Uh, the economic development director position stayed vacant for some time, and I'm excited that we'll have somebody filling that role that is more than capable of doing the role appropriately. So thank you. We're lucky to have you on board, and I look forward to working with you and figuring out what we can do to support you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson McDowell, uh, Councilwoman Dolan. Oh, um, thank you and uh, welcome, Director Johnson. Um, <clears throat> actually, I was gonna say a lot of what um, Councilman McDowell said just to make sure everybody knew because we got those emails so late in the day today. I wasn't sure if folks had a chance to look at them. Um, I will say, I think everyone should look at Mr. Smallnick's email. It's um, really dense. There's, there's a ton of information in there, but um, it does talk about how important it is to preserve our capital. And um, he compares us to North Haven and Milford, and it's, it's really fascinating. And hopefully, once we get through budget, we can spend a lot of extra time on economic development. But um, Director Johnson, my one question is, someone did bring up the fact that according to our charter, you may not be qualified as the director of planning. Um, did you see that comment? And if you did, could you reassure us that it's fine and we can move on? I have, I have not seen that. I have not seen that comment. The only thing that might just, I, 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 do, I, am, I am not a member of the AICP, but, uh, but otherwise I don't understand how I could not be qualified for that. I have a okay. professional degree in city and regional planning and in prior terms acted as the acting director of planning for the city of Hartford. Okay, um, let me just pull it up and I Point will- of order, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not interviewing anyone tonight. We are approving positions of people that we are not speaking of specifically. So I think all of this conversation has been completely inappropriate because it's all out of order. And I would appreciate the leadership stepping in here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Horst. I was just about to say something very similar. We, um, we, we well, approved positions. I just thought positions. we couldn't do it be, based on this concern that it violated our charter. And, and you know, that's something to look into at another time. Uh, but, you know, thank you. Uh, if I if I remember, one of the issues that we had was with the marketing consultant, which was why expenses got tabled. So, um, if someone can speak good, on that, I, I'm fine. I, I didn't mean to violate anything. I'm. Let's move on. Thank you. I, oh, oh, and um, uh, Councilperson McGarry, I, I just shared McGarry. I just would say I'm not sure if there's a specific consultant that's been identified, I think that there is a marketing budget that's proposed that's being used to support mm -hmm. economic development activities for the department. So um, just, just to clarify, I believe that's what the, as le at least based upon the transition memo that I read from director, um, from, the, from Curtis, that, that that was what the intent is, is that there is a marketing budget. There's a line item for marketing and economic development um, and I would also say that it is the only discretionary line item for spending and economic development that's in the budget. So um, that, th those two things, I don't think there's a specific consultant. There, there are some initiatives that we're talking about in terms of one was related to the opportunity zone. The other one was to kind of promote Hamden. And a third thing was, uh, I believe, to continue supporting some of the commercial development opportunities that are there for 
And th those represent, again, the only discretionary spending that is in a department that is dedicated to trying to grow, grow the grand list, create workforce opportunities for individuals, and then overall support the business community. Thank you. Councilperson Farmer, you have something to say about the expenses particularly? Uh, yes, Chairwoman. I also just have a point of clear, uh, 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 point of personal privilege. Um, so I, I'll start with the fact that, you know, again, we can call up any item as long as throughout the budget, right? We're doing wrap up, but that is something that we can do. Um, so just want to remind counselors on that. Um, and also, I would remind, I'll make a point of clarification or order, that's not a point of personal privilege. That's just a practice, but we were literally on the economic development expenses. I was trying to focus our thoughts in on that. Again, that was a point of personal privilege, uh, Council President. And okay. it, I am correct in that. I also would remind us to uh, try to call each other counselors and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of this item, through you, council uh, uh, chairperson, uh, uh, to Director Johnson, um, is it possible to share that uh, uh, memo with us? And then, uh, again, we know you are new, uh, being thrown into the fray of all of this. Um, but, but do you see, between the three buckets you just kind of spoke on, do you see... Uh, is this enough money? And also what, what out of those three different buckets you just put out before us, what, what do you think that breakup is going to be between those three different things, between marketing, between uh, creating economic opportunity zone? Uh, 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 and I forgot the, the last bucket that you mentioned. So I apologize. I believe, I believe again, I, I believe that the, so A, I, I have no issue sharing uh, the director's transition memo. You know, we can make sure that that happens through the mayor's office. Um, yeah, I have no issue with that. Um, in terms of, you know, if, you're, if this is a liberty to say, do I think that the operating budget for the department is sufficient given what the town's goals are? No. Um, do I think that this is the moment to have that conversation? Probably not. <laughs> Um, but what, but I do think that um, there, there needs to be some type of consulting services to market the town, um, whether that be through an opportunity zone um, piece, which is important. Um, I do think that initiatives that, that are done to identify, support, and drive business, to try, drive traffic to small businesses in any community is important. Um, and I think the last thing is supporting our real estate listing to make sure that things come off, that uh, we can make sure that people know what properties are available, how they're zoned and how they're marketed and what they can be used for is a, is a useful tool. Um, I, at this point, given where I am, I, I, there could be a time where I might think that those dollars could be better prioritized to support uh, you know, emergent priorities, but I, but I do think it makes sense to have uh, a marketing professional services budget line item in the budget that can be used to support departmental activities. Thank you, uh, Director Johnson. Just a follow up to that. Um, I, I don't think any of us have the appetite to add anything more. Um, but if it you wasn't a just... request, by the way. I, I wasn't requested. No, 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 no. no. no and, and if you were, that would be in your purview and respectful. Uh, because you have an obligation to us to share those things, and we have an obligation uh, to try to do the best we can with what we have. Um, if you could throw out, again, we know you're new to uh, new in, in a context of getting around a lot of our stuff. So, a ballpark figure that could potentially come back to us later in the year, just so we can be cognizant of it, so that we won't be shocked and surprised. If that's something you could do. Order, I'm not sure this is relevant for our current conversation. Uh, uh, I'm going to disagree, Counselor. I'm asking Excuse whether, 
Just go ahead and finish your question so um, Director Johnson can answer to the best of his ability at this time, and then we can move on to the rest of the council people. Great. Uh, I just want to know if there's enough money in line, uh, which we are speaking on, and if not, what could we possibly need in the future? Um, if you can have, if you have a guesstimate, if not, that's okay. We can move on. Yeah, I'm through just, you, sure. I'm just going to answer that question quickly. I, I would, I would. It's the same answer that I gave to the PNZ chair. Um, you know, I, I've committed to the mayor and to the to the finance director that I would put together a a kind of a relative, you know, medium level, it's not completely high, medium level kind of action plan within the first 30 days. And then I will come back and share that action plan with council that will try and identify priorities with budget. And then we could work from there. I just think it would be irresponsible for me to make assumptions that had not been thought out yet and discussed. Thank so you, Director John. I appreciate the question. I apologize that that's a duck, but I can get you something back in 30 days. You know, no, no, to... that makes sense. Thank you. Are you all Thank set? you, Chairwoman. Okay. I, I'm all set. Thank okay. you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Councilwoman Bonadies. Thank you. I, I don't know if we've done this already, but I was going to make a motion to decrease the um, uh, expenditure request from 336230 to 276320 reflecting um, the $60,000 that is no longer being requested from HEDC. Does it reflect what? automatically? We're, we were not going to be funding that line. Isn't that correct? I think we made a motion to clear. I think it just does it automatically. Am I wrong? I don't know. I think, can you opine on that, please? Do we have to adjust the yeah, final that total? Is, yeah. that, that is accurate. Uh, your action on uh, eliminating that line directly uh, changes the bottom line. You don't have to change bottom lines. OK. All right, thank you. All right, Councilperson Horsley. I'd like to call the question on expenses in the economic development department. Second. Roll call vote, please. All right, let us know when you're ready, Ms. Renta. Okay, give me one second. Councilwoman Gary, she's not with us tonight, is she? She's absent. Councilwoman Horsley? Yes. Councilman McDowell? No. President McGarry? Yes. Councilwoman Merle Lewis? Yes. Councilwoman Shoemaker? I think she had to step away. To step away. Losing herself. Yeah, she'll be back shortly. Okay. Um, Councilman Weber's not with us. Councilwoman Wetmore. Yes. Three, three opposed the pass. All right. Calling the question. All those in favor of passing these expenses as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Opposed. Okay, we got one opposition and any abstentions? Miss Shoemaker. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't believe there's anything else to be discussed in this department. Um, we're going to move on to other items now. Thank you very much, Ms. Baez. We're moving on to police. In the police, we have an interesting situation and uh, Mr. Uh, Weber's in transit. If he comes, I'll 
give it back to him. Uh, we tabled line, the professional technical line on page 149, 0590. Uh, however, we are also unfinished with the entire police department. So I uh, will ask for um, us to untable 0590 professional technical service, uh, but then we're not restricted to that line since we are looking at the entirety of the expenses uh, for the police department. Um, and by the way, did Mr. Johnson sign off? He did. I, I, also, um, I also see uh, Councillor Weber, uh, President McGarry. Oh, there, okay. <laughs> He's well, on I a think, plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Mr. Weber, um, are you in a position to lead the discussion on this, sir? Okay. All right, uh, then thank you. I'll uh, continue on. That's some dedication right there, Councilor Weber. And, and good Wi Fi on the plane. I'm impressed. Uh, so, may I have a motion to uh, remove, put uh, 0590 professional tech service uh, back on the table? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor of taking or uh, putting it back on the table, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, so we're now in discussion. We do professional tech service was specifically tabled, but we did not finish the police expenses in general. Uh, Councilor Baez. Um, I just wanted to, I made a note to myself to bring this up next time this came out, which is I looked at the three year actuals for the pro tech line and that was 207,000, 378,000, 344,000. And then last year's actual of 424,000, now moving all the way up to 570,000. So we're accounting for more than the $100,000 um, boost that um, Mr. Rodriguez was explaining to us. Thank you. Um, Councilor Bonadish. Yes, I'm wondering why the, the um, vice chair is not running this meeting. Uh, ordinarily, what we do is if in the absence of a uh, counselor, that I would just uh, do it. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. I've seen the vice chair run meetings when the chair is. All right, you know what, Ms. Bodies, go right ahead, Mr. Caesar. That was the process that was described in that memo that you sent us. That's right. Go, go ahead. Then. Yeah, you, you said that you were president was going to take our place. Only reason I was taking the place of Athena Gary is because the last time President McGarry and Kath were not able to. Um, there were some issues there. Yeah. Was not able to be the chair of that that portion, but there the it was that I was the third in line. <laughs> that is that is the usual comment that. what is excuse the me. usual process is if a person who is not available uh, you know as mr weber uh, seems not to be uh then the president or in the president's absence the president pro temp but in that instance miss gary wasn't around um it was just okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. I do have a comment about the professional technical service. Is that, and I would like to ask the chief if the new police accountability laws is, is the reason that this line is um, bumped up to um, above what was original, like the last four year historical look back. Could you speak to that, please? There is a part of it that is encapsulated in that. Um, there are laws regarding um, uh, in-car cameras and costs for um, storage of, of body camera and in-car cameras footage. Does that reflect the increase in this line? That is part of the increase. There are many increases. I, I believe Mr. Rodriguez will be able to better answer the main major increases that uh, needed are needed in IT 
Uh, and that's why the uh, substantial increase is there this year. Okay. Um, through you, President. Officer Rodriguez? Or yeah, sure, sorry. Um, so there's a lot of items on that list. Um, most of those, most of those increases are, you know, a lot of the items are warranty related support. So those costs are always, you know, we try to negotiate and get those costs down, but usually they go up. Um, I will say that in, there's probably two or three major items in there that will come off of that list. If we go with the least, you know, going back to what we talked about operating, how we could lease the equipment. So probably, I want to say 46 grand would be reduced from that list. Otherwise, pretty much everything on there is just, you know, like I said, warranty costs, support costs, um, some miscellaneous, miscellaneous items. Uh, but those are usually, you know, most of those are things that we need that we cannot do without. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Bonavides, Council Farm. Thank you, Council President. I. I, I, I thank uh, Mr. Rodriguez and the chief for joining us once again. Um, I, I do have concern that, you know, every, except for the fire department that came to us and asked us very directly to move certain things over from, um, you know, a capital budget into their budget and was itemized and very specific this is the only department that has been adding stuff a la carte into their budget that should be reflected in capital. Um, I, I guess my questions are, because there's certain things that we need to get done, right? And that's fine. But what are the itemized things? If that can't be sent to us now, if it can be sent to us at some point, itemized of what is being asked for. Uh, and then my second question through you, uh, 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 Council President, to the Chief, uh, you told us that by doing this agreement with this vendor that they would be installing cameras and other things at a reduced cost. So what is the cost differential uh, uh, that we are saving by leasing these cars that will be outfitted? And then is there any duplication in costs for cameras or anything else that is reflected in that line as it currently stands through you, Council President. There's, there's no duplication, but um, I think when you stated that I stated, uh, I'm not sure when I stated that. Uh, so when we had our meetings for the five cars, you mentioned to us that there would be a savings that, that by renting the cars and them outfitting them with equipment, that it would be overall cheaper for us to rent the cars and have the vendor outfit it than it would for us to buy a car and then outfit it through you, Council President. Um, that, that has to do with the vehicles, the camera, the, the uh, cameras are completely separate priced from that vehicle. It has nothing to do with the actual vehicle price. That's something separate. So the cost of labor, of outfitting, so on and so forth would also be the same through you, Council President. Um, Mr. Rodriguez might be able to confirm this, but I think the... Um, Installation is all baked into the price of the in-car cameras. No, no I, I, I get that, but I, my question, and it's okay, the department can send uh, information at a later time, but is there a savings in that if the vendor is doing all of that versus us buying the materials bulk and then spending time for installation, so on and so forth? I think it would be better if you got that information to us at a later time to save time in the interest of time. Um, but I, I, last time I asked, was everything that we needed reflected uh, so that we weren't duplicating in the capital budget? And now there are other 
things that would be in the capital budget that aren't reflected. So I want to double ask again, in this line, everything that is needed, there's nothing else that will be showing up in the capital. There's not, nothing else that we're asking for that may be duplicated through the council president. I think that would be a question for uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, could you answer that question better than I can? Yeah, uh, Councilman Farmer, just to clarify, are you referring specifically to let's say, um, let's say storage, for example, uh, you know, the in-car cameras, you know, like we, we will be, let's say using some of our hardware for that storage. You know, it's not designated just for that, but I have to carve out some space for that. Is that, is that, is that what you're asking? Does that make sense? No, I, I get what you're asking, I, I, what you're explaining, and that makes sense. But I, I guess my concern is that we are unable to get the full scope of what we need for a capital budget and what is uh, pressing, right? I, I trust the general wisdom um, but I want to make sure so that we're not being unfair to other departments that y'all are making the separate requests so that we can, uh, there are certain things that are absolute emergency. Like I, I, I feel the servers, right? That's absolute emergency. If it fails on you, everything is down. That's a chaos for public safety, right? There are other things that can wait and be purchased. So I want to make sure that we're putting in the things that are emergency in this budget that should be reflected in the capital, but because we haven't passed capital for four years, I understand the need for that. I, I wanna divorce those two because I don't wanna be unfair to other departments because no other department has done that except for fire. And they were very, very clear with us, itemized to the T on what they were asking for. Through you. Thank you, Councilor Farmer. Uh, Mr. Jackson has his hand up. I believe you might speak to this. I'm also looking for, we did receive an itemized list from the police and they're very long and comprehensive budget package and trying to locate on my various devices where that is. Uh, I have, we, it's it's page, uh, page 164 in the, in the, in the budget book. Uh, and I'm also happy to uh, uh, to send uh, within the next couple of minutes um, the actual munis runs as to what has been spent so far this year and what was spent last year, uh, if the council would think that was uh, uh, was useful information. Uh, the, point of information. The, 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 Sorry. Sorry, I thought yes. you were. Go ahead. Yes, Councilor Horsley. Um, we did receive an email from Ms. Renta that um, Mr. Rodriguez had forwarded to us about the itemized uh, items in this line. So to me, it's clear what we're spending in this line from that email. And the ProTech account is itemized. I was looking at an email. It, was in paper. It, it is itemized. That is not my question. My question is, what is needed, right? Because there's tons of things that are, are not the same, right? This line is demonstrably higher. And I am trying to assess, is that because of the police accountability bill? Or is this because there are other needs? And if there are other needs that are itemized here, what would be more appropriate for a capital budget? That is what I'm trying to discern through you, Council President. Mm -hmm. Councilman Farmer, some, some other things are mandated through the accountability bill. So that's on, on my side. And then I think uh, the necessity side is on Mr. Rodriguez uh, when it comes to the servers. Uh, I, and I think that's what he's speaking to that those items are at, uh, I, and, and Mr. Rodriguez can explain or, or explain if I'm wrong, but uh, we're, at critical, we're at a critical stage with the servers and some other equipment that are needed that were neglected over the years because he didn't have the monies uh, in the past budgets that I think he was um, expecting to get at a capital uh, in the past budgets. I hope that maybe that explains it better for you. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, that has been the argument I have made the last couple of meetings on this about the police uh, department. 
Uh, so it doesn't clear up anything for me, but I think I made my point about the need to differentiate on the capital budget and more clear uh, clarification. So I will be following up and asking uh, for that breakdown, but I think I've made my point very clearly and it has been uh, uh, seen and come to fruition. Through you, Council President, I am done with my line of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. And Ms. Baez, before heading that way, Mr. Rodriguez has his hand up as well. So I just want to see, Mr. Rodriguez, is there any additional input? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So I think from my understanding that the stuff in ProTech tends to be warranties and support. So I think that's why it's not in capital. Um, it, it, you know, it's designated for specifically for that, from my understanding. Um, and I know you bring up the cars a lot and I just wanted to talk about the cars because, uh, you know, I can give you an example. I used to be able to, like, let's say we had an issue. I used to be able to go in the garage, you know, let's say a computer needed upgrading or fixing. I would have one or two spares. Right now we're at a point where I go to the garage and there's no cars. And if these guys have an issue or they need something fixed, well, guess what? I got to pull them off the road. Like there's no, there's no spares. They have to wait for me to fix it. That can be from 15 minutes to a couple hours. So I think that's where the chief is coming from. You know, you know, I hope that just, you know, justifies why we need them. You know what I mean? No, I, I definitely get the concern. I, I, this is not, uh, my point is that this is not solely on the police department, right? But I want to make sure that we are, are, getting the information so that when we make the next capital budget that we don't end up duplicating costs and that we are not encouraging departments to put stuff in rather than put it appropriately through uh, the capital budget. That is my main concern. I understand there's a backlog and I understand there's a public safety uh, concern and that's why I've pushed and annoyed about getting some of these things approved in our budget rather than try to push and wait for the proper process of putting it in capital. So I, I will follow up with y'all. I appreciate your patience in, in trying to help me understand uh, this pertinent issue through you, Council President. Thank you, Council Farmer. Councilor Baez. Um, so I'm going to make a motion for discussion. Uh, I want to lower the ProTech line by $46,000. I'll second that for discussion. Thank you. Um, so the reason why I'm saying this is that, first of all, I really appreciate the list that Pedro Rodriguez sent. Mr. Rodriguez, thank you so much for sending over that itemized list. Um, that really is uh, gives us the ability to like, look at what we got going on here and what's needed. And I tallied it up, it was exactly $100,000. Um, and I was willing, looking at this list to give the department $100,000 more than last year's, right? So last year line was at 424. I said 524 for this year. And then you made the statement that we have about a wiggle room of about $46,000, which equals out to exactly 524. So I was, okay, good, this math lines up pretty much. Um, but you know, because this is my first term and my second budget, I depend a lot on these three year actuals. And I'm looking at these three year actuals and it goes from 207, 378, 344, 424,000. And then this one's request is 570. It's actually, this number is moving. The trend is a little too exponential for me a little too much of an upswing. I would really hope that you guys over at this um, fabulous department will work real hard to try to find those savings that Mr. Rodriguez has said that he's really looking for. Those bundles that give you discounts. I'm really looking for you guys to work outside of the box so that you can find the savings in this line because this is really big swing right here. To go from even just two years ago, 344 to now 570 is a big apple to bite. So that is why I'm motioning to lower it by the $46,000 that you said we have for wiggle room once we do some savings.
you were muted. That would do it. Thank you, Councilor Byers, Councilor McDowell. Thank you. I, I also wanted to uh, thank you for getting us that information over so quickly, especially after such a late night, it did add right up to $100,000. Um, can I can I kick it over to you and, and get your thoughts on this, Mr. Rodriguez? Yeah, so um, I just want to, you know, I'll, I'll start off by saying, like, I think actually last year we initially requested more. I want to say, I mean, my memory might be off, but I want to say it was like 600. So we actually went back to that list and really trimmed everything that we didn't need. Um, and the problem with the growth is, um, I'll make a point. So, you know, you guys probably have one or two, three computers right now, right? Maybe, maybe an iPad or whatnot. Five years ago, you guys probably had much less. It's the same with us. We had one or two servers, maybe this software product. As we keep going, they're just, everything seems to be more uh, IT related. And along with that, we have to get the support contracts. If we don't, we're putting itself either at risk by hardware failures, or even in some cases that software will not work. There's some companies that if you don't buy the licensing, it just doesn't work. Um, I wish we could, we could, you know, um, use less software, you know, use less, like I could, you, <laughs> there's times where I wish we had less, but unfortunately it just seems like everything is becoming more, more and more and more electronic or, and IT related. So that's why, and I, I, this line is gonna grow every year. I don't see how we can, you know, like I said, we already went back and trim it. I don't see how we can reduce it. You know, the only way I can see that is, for example, this lease, will help us in terms of that. They're giving us a really good deal on the lease, whereas if we bought everything separate, uh, that might help that come down. I, otherwise, you know, just negotiating with vendors, I don't see that really shrinking a whole lot. Um, I, as my colleague mentioned, you had discussed a little bit of wiggle room. Can you reconcile that for us? Yeah, so there's three items in there. There's a uh, cohesity, which is thirty six thousand, pure storage, which is ten, and a um, Cisco servers, which are ten. Those are support costs if we bought them. I put it in there just as more as of an in case. If we lease the equipment, the lease costs actually include support, so we wouldn't need that. You know, I'm looking more to like cover our bases, like say, let's say. You know, I don't want to under deliver. I don't want to not have that in there. Right. And then we don't lease it and we buy it. And now I got to go to you guys and ask for 50 grand, you know, a year or something. So, I mean, this sounds more of like uh, if it's necessary. When you say it's flexible or there's wiggle room, it sounds like these three charges are more if necessary kind of things. Well, we, we, we need the equipment. Like we need it. It's just how do you guys want to pay for it? Do you want to lease it, which is going to give us a great deal and be able to break it down? Or do you want to? spend 300 grand plus up front and you know you know what i mean like and, and when i say the wiggle room i mean if we lease it those you know that doesn't have have to come out of protect it's in operating you know once I, like look, I'm sorry. yeah i so it sounds like we wouldn't need those funds that's what it's sounding like to me the direction the direction we're headed in it sounds like we would not need those funds in professional technical but i see other hands up I'm not like like Councilwoman Baez. I was inclined to you came down to the to almost to the dollar to hundred thousand dollars. I was inclined to leave this alone. Um, but if there are more financially sustainable ways to go about acquiring this equipment, be it a lease or something else, um, and to me it sounds like a lease might also offer us the opportunity to be more up to date on our equipment instead of purchasing something and then having to purchase it again when it times out. Um, so to me, on the on the on the on the surface, it sounds like and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you agree a lease is probably the better way to go both technologically and financially. Um, so I'm inclined to support the motion in support of going the route that you're discussing right now. Um, I'd love to hear if you have any concerns about that other than what was already stated if you if you see that as a problem, please let me know call me on it. Um, otherwise, I see, I see that there's other conversation and I want to hear, I want to hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Horsley. 
Um, I just wanted to say from uh, someone that has to deal with a lot of vendors and a lot of software in my own laboratory, I can uh, back up Mr. Rodrigue Rodriguez that this is like, it's crazy, but it's real. Like you want, as much as I spend in my laboratory on expenses for service contracts or warranties on certain things that I don't want to, I know that if something happens, it's going to cost me more in the long run. And so I really just want to say that I'm in full support of what Mr. Rodriguez is, is asking for here. And while we don't want to see this going up in the budget because we are in uh, the constraints that we're under, I also don't want to constrain data in this department. And I also don't want to constrain the one IT person that we have in this department. And so I understand how much I have to spend every year increasingly on warranties, service contracts that are crazy, and I don't want to do it, but it's like insurance, right? I pay medical and dental insurance. I don't really need dental insurance. My teeth are pretty good, but I still pay it because I know if I need something, it's going to be a more expensive in the long run. It's going to help me. And so this is what we're doing here. We're paying insurance for the things that we own so that we can make sure that we don't have to pay more later. And I'm sure Mr. Rodriguez, as I do, goes into these vendors and says, are you sure we need this? Are you sure? Right? I'm sure. Miss, Miss Baez, did you want to say something or? I'm not arguing that they don't need it. I know, but it's hard to know, but when you're talking and we're talking, I'm, talking sorry. I'm just over here. It's, I talked to her in movies too. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just didn't know. Um, so, um, yeah. So I just want to say that, you know, I'm going to support this line as is because I really want to make sure that this department is able to capture the data that we might need in the future to understand what's going on. Uh, with the department in the future. And I want to make sure that the, the positions that we fund are fully able to do the job they need to do. And, and so, yeah, so I'm, I'm all in. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Horsley. Councilor Farmer. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, th thank you, Council President. Uh, through you, uh, you know, we can't, it has been my understanding the police department uh, has been more a fast or famine, right? Like we, there was a long time we had the, the uh, police department building that was in neglect, right? And now we have this beautiful police department building. Um, I, in a body, fast or famine is not good for your body, right? Uh, if you eat in that way, it is detrimental to your health, right? Uh, where we are as a town, we are in a financial crisis, right? So we cannot do fast or famine, right? We can't have all our systems failing and having our one uh, employee try to put out a million forest fires. At the same time, you know, we can't buy more acreage, right? So that that's kind of where I'm coming from with all of this is that we have to right size where we are as a government right now. Because if we don't, uh, we're going to have to have major cuts either to personnel or to other things. And the last thing I wanna do is, is to, to have a public safety plan one year and then the next year we have to cut it hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is not good for continuity. That's not good for morale. That's not good for the budget. That's not good for the taxpayer. So I, I cannot support this. We, we basically can't spend money unless it's absolutely needed, right? And that's in all departments, right? Um, I have not seen the demonstrable need. Maybe it's not articulated in a way that I understand. But I have not seen the need. I will be supporting this motion that has been made through you, Council President. Uh, thank you, Councilor Farmer. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, you did have your hand up there briefly. Did you want to respond? Yeah, sure. Um, just to kind of address Con Councilman Farmer, uh, it's like Councilwoman Horses said, it's, it's sort of an insurance. I mean, I, 
you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it looks like you're on an iPhone or an iPad right now, Nick, right? Let's say you buy that, you know, you can, you can either get the Apple care for a hundred, 200 bucks and, and know that something goes wrong within two years, you're going to get a new one. If you don't and it breaks, well, guess what? You're going to spend $800. So it, it's, you can do that, but you're taking a gamble. So it's either, you know, you stay safe now, or you might spend three times more when it breaks. That, that's just what, you know. I understand that, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. I am of the philosophy of ball on a budget. So I never take out those insurances. And I'm like, cool, we're just going to make this work. And if it happens that it doesn't work, cool. You know, headphones broke, cool. We're going with $20 noise cancel headphones for like a year. And we're saving up until we can get those new upgrades, right? Um, that's a real story, right? So that's kind of the philosophy I come from. Um, but I understand, I, I just, our taxes are high and I wanna make sure we're doing the best we can do in public safety. And, and I appreciate you bringing it to our attention because you had been ringing the alarm for some time and we haven't been paying attention, but I don't want us to jump the gun as well. So through you, I, I appreciate all the work you're doing. So I hope you don't take this as, uh, as a detriment to your work. This is more a concern with everything else that we have to balance in town. Thank you, Council Farmer. Councilor Baez. I just want to reiterate, um, I do not want us to work with less. I want us to have these things. But if leasing enables us to have those insurances, have those licenses, but we also have the ability to update that software as often as a lease will allow us to, because I know when you buy something, you definitely hold on to it way longer than when you're leasing it. I think the way that technology goes, leasing sounds so attractive to me. So if there is a possibility to lease it so that we save close to $50,000, please save us $50,000. I'm begging you, please save us $50,000. Um, I also want to say that, um, first off, everybody here is terrible at metaphors. <laughs> the worst at comparisons. Um, but I'm also really glad that uh, last year, uh, I supported you having a IT tech in your in along with you, working with you. And this year we have approved that in our budget, it looks like. So I'm really hoping you guys, you get a lot done with that kind of help in the department. We're, we're in the process of trying to hire that position, uh, Councilwoman Bias. Thank you. Uh, the, pro the problem with that position, and I think Mr. Rodriguez could probably uh, agree with me, it, it's for an IT uh, position. It's not a high paying position. So it, it is tough to find someone to take that position. Um, and I think that's one of the issues that we might, might have, um, uh, you know, hopefully we can get someone who will take the position, maybe a, a younger, uh, someone who just came out of college. Uh, but, uh, I, I think Mr. Rodriguez, uh, is that, you think that's an accurate statement? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, just to put it bluntly, last year was an interesting year. So, um, it's kind of hard to hire somebody, and you know, during a pandemic. And no ageism; they could be any age. All right, uh, thank you. And um, I saw a couple other hands up prior. Uh, our Councilor uh, Rolouis, Councilor Wetmore, are you good? Um, I did have some questions, um, but I think most of them were, were answered, but I do have a statement to make and it may not be appropriate, but um, first of all, I wanna thank Mr. Rodriguez and the chief for being here and being in the hot seat again. But um, I think that these things, I know I don't understand any of this technology, not one of those things in there. And I think we have to trust the people we hire to do what they think is best. Now, maybe we can say $45,000, but in the long run, maybe it'll cost us 75,000. So I have to rely on uh, Mr. Rodriguez and his experience and hopefully, and I'm sure he is, he's doing what is best for the police department and the town. So uh, I will be voting a no on this. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Wetmore. Mr. Rodriguez, did you want to respond? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, if you guys don't understand, I mean, you can come on down. Like, I can show you anything. I have no problem showing you guys. You know, it might be too much or it might be complicated. I have, you know, I have no problem. It may take you up on that, but I don't think I'd even understand once I saw it. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Whitmore. Uh, Councilor Roe Lewis. Call the question. Again. <clears throat> There's been a call the question. Roll uh, call vote, please. And uh, we can have a roll call vote on that. Ms. Renter, you're back. Ms. Rent is back. I'm back. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> I was getting them ready for that line. Break. Okay, this is to call the question on. Councilwoman Baez? No. Councilwoman Bonadies? I wish I knew what the joke was, but I what, don't. What, what is the motion no. we're voting on, please? Uh, this is a motion to call the question on a reduction <laughs> to protect line of $46,000. But this is the call the question. Councilman Bonadies? Yes, please call the question. Councilman Caesar? Yes. Councilwoman Klaus? Yes. Councilwoman Dolan? Yes. Councilman Farmer? No. Councilwoman Horsley? Yes. Councilman McDowell? Uh, apologies, can I get, <laughs> my dog's making a lot of noise. Can I, can I get a repeat on the exact motion on the floor? Call to question. Yeah, absolutely not, thank you. <laughs> President McGarry? Yes. Councilwoman Mer Lewis? Yes. Councilwoman Shoemaker. Gotcha. Um, is Councilman Weber with us? I, I don't believe he is. I believe he, he, he's with us, but I don't know if he's a, Councilman Weber. Are you there? Outstanding. There is. And Councilwoman Wetmore. Yes. Question's been called with three opposed. All right, uh, this is a motion to reduce the protect line of police expenses by $46,000. Can I have a roll call vote on the council president? Sure. If I guess the amount beforehand, do I get a prize? No? Okay, let's have a roll call. <laughs> you definitely get a prize. <laughs> Flowers to your address tomorrow. <laughs> Councilwoman Baez. Yes. Councilwoman Bonnet. No. Councilman Caesar. No. Councilwoman Klaus. No. Councilwoman Dolan. No. Councilman Farmer. Yes. Councilwoman Horsley. No. Councilman McDowell? Yes. President McGarry? No. Councilwoman Roe Lewis? No. Councilwoman Shoemaker? No. Councilman Weber? Outstanding. Councilwoman Wetmore. No. It fails with three in favor and all, well, one abstention, all others opposed. We are back to our main motion or yeah, our main motion, which is the uh, police expenditures. Councilor Caesar. Thank you. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time or not, but I wanted to discuss the um, clerk position that was uh, 
we'll put in the budget by the chief. Is this the appropriate time or should I wait for another time? Um, we're on expenses, so I think we should close out expenses and then uh, you could ask to reopen uh, positions, I think. Thank you. Please make sure you note me for that, that I'll do that. Thank you. Yep, we will do. Thank you. Councilor Farmer. Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Council President. Um, I'm trying to find the line. Okay, thank you. Um, so the vehicle rental line uh, through you, Council President, to the chief. It, in terms of this, I'm guessing this is the the other vehicle line. This is for the the unmarked vehicles. Um, when do we renegotiate this contract? And when is the last time we went out to bid on this through you, Council President? The contract uh, on the rate, just for clarification. Uh, I believe you're talking about our uh, yeah our our uh, plain clothes uh, vehicle rentals, and I believe uh, we go through Enterprise um, Acme. I think it's called Acme Auto actually, um, and uh, I think we up it every year. Uh, but I think we had a bid waiver uh, the last few years, so I'm not I'm not actually sure when's the last time it went out to bid. But I know this year we did a bid waiver. So, so, okay, if you can send over that information, uh, uh, I would appreciate it. Um, and and it, the line has gone up, but we are still only renting three vehicles through you, Chairman? Correct, we, uh, we, we are, we do rent three vehicles. And I, I, I believe we're right around the same amount every year between 22 and 24. Um, I don't think they've gone up very much on the price. And, and, they, and, and when we, we do, we have priced it out with other uh, rental car companies and they've always been the lowest. But it's been a couple of years since we've gone out to bid, correct? Yeah. Yes, Councilman Farmer, yeah, you're correct. Thank you. I um, yeah, I, I won't touch this line, but I I, I would be interested in, in getting that information, uh, so that we're we're seeing what we're doing. And I also, you know, uh, I guess my next question: Are the three? Are we constantly using the three vehicles? Are we using one or two vehicles and having them for some time? What's the demand? Uh, in terms of the three vehicles through you, Council President? Those three vehicles are in use uh, constantly. They, they are used on a full-time basis. Great. Uh, I will just take the time so that way I don't uh, take too many bites. Uh, but the overtime line for special events, um, if we do not uh, end up spending that much money on special events. Um, and that goes, uh, I'm guessing we're going to do it. In clarification, what line are you referring to, Mr. I'm sorry, Councilman Farmer? No, no problem, uh, Councilor uh, from the 9th. Um, let me go back to it. It is the Google, there we are. Just pause. The, it is the 013 line, so it is on page 155. It is the first item. So I, I, I guess my question is, do you see us using all of this? And then the second question is the breakdown. Do we have a breakdown of these different events that you listed in the description through you, Council President? This, this uh, line item is actually for our central communications. Um, 
but those events are some of the um, reasons for overtime. We usually have to hire extra dispatchers on uh, mischief night, uh, Halloween, Fourth uh, of July fireworks uh, due to the call volume. Um, but we do you we we usually do use all of that monies. Um, but that that is our central communications overtime budget. No, no, I, I get that. I guess my question, uh, to, just to restate it, do we have a breakdown on on, on what of those particular events are, are driving uh, this cost of overtime? I think the main the main driving factor is the minimum uh, and extra staffing requirement in the collective bargaining agreement. Understood. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Councilor Farmer. <clears throat> um, Councilor Ro Lewis. I'm calling the question. Can I get a roll call vote, please? The question on what? Can I get a second? <laughs> yeah, we would need a second on that. Second on expenses for the police department. This would be a roll call to call the question on expenses on the police department. Uh, moved by Ms. Ro Lewis, seconded by Ms. Horst. Mr. Mr. McGarry, just to just to clear just to clarify, there were no hands up, none. Thank you, Ms. Ro Lewis. Ms. Renta? I'm getting it ready. Hold on one second, please. So this will be a vote to call the question for the expenses for the police department. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're biased. No. Council Warren Bonadies. Pass. Councilman Caesar? Yes. Councilwoman Klaus? Yes. Councilwoman Dolan? No. Councilman Farmer? Pass. Councilwoman Horsley? Yes. Councilman McDowell? Councilman, no. I'll come back. We have a few passes anyway. Uh, President McGarry? Pass. Councilwoman Ro Lewis? Yes. Councilman Shoemaker? Yes. Councilman Weber? I'm staying. Councilwoman Wetmore? You're muted. Muted. I'm a no. I had another question I wanted to ask. Thank you. Councilwoman Bonadies. Okay, I'm sorry, but I did get a phone call from my CPA right when that vote was happening. So um, can I please get um, a, a... This is a vote to call the question, and the question being called is the expenses for the police department. Oh, the all the whole, all the expenses. Call the question. Yes, please. Um, Councilman Farmer. No. Councilman McDowell. Appreciate the patience there, I'm a no. President McGarry. Yes. Seven in favor, five opposed, three absent, an abstention. All right, uh, the question has been called. Um, so we have to go to the vote. Sorry, Ms. Webber, I'm gonna lower your hand. Roll call vote, please, Council President. This is a vote for the police department expense lines and we'll have a roll call vote. Councilwoman Baez. Councilwoman Baez? No. 
Councilwoman Bozzi's? Yes. Councilman Caesar? Yes. Councilwoman Klaus? Yes. Councilwoman Dolan? I abstain. Councilman Farmer? Pass. Councilwoman Horsley? Yes. Councilman McDowell? No. President McGarry? Pass. Councilwoman Roe Lewis? Yes. Councilwoman Shoemaker? Gotcha as a yes. Councilman Weber? Abstention. Councilwoman Wetmore? Yes. Okay, let's go back. Councilman Farmer? No. President McGarry? Yes. Yeah. Eight in favor, three opposed, passes. Thank you. Um, and I believe Mr. Caesar had a note, a particular note about the police department. Mr. Caesar. Thank you, Mr. President. I had a question for the Chief Sullivan, if you have a second. Um, Chief, can you walk me through your rationale behind why the um, account clerk was funded for this upcoming year? What was your rationale behind doing that? Well, we're, we're one of the major departments in the town that currently doesn't have the position. It centralizes our payroll uh, and accounting functions. Um, since we've had the, the person in that position, uh, there has been no errors. Uh, it's, it's been uh, streamlined and very productive. Um, it handles not only a regular payroll, extra duty, uh, purchase orders, recs, um, longevity, the sick incentive, um, invoices, alarms, and parking tags. So that position currently is being handled by who? Well, not by the person's name, but by the, uh, explain the situation, please. Uh, we, we got a part-time position there right now. Um, we lost a position last year and we've been, we've been piecemealing the work from that uh, position that was eliminated. Um, and this person has been doing that position. We, were, we, we had some errors that occurred and we thought streamlining it with this position uh, would make it more streamlined and productive and without errors. And, and that's um, the case. That, that agreement, is that something that's like mutually agreed to or both, both sides okay with that in terms of union and administration or how is that being handled? Uh, they, they mutually agreed. I believe if the position uh, gets eliminated, I, I think the union would uh, probably move forward with a grievance. Um, and the reason why I say that was because I was contacted by that union today to let me know that they would be grieving it um, if that does occur. I know and we discussed this. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Chief. Keep continue on. Sorry. Uh, I believe that's the town hall uh, union. And you had mentioned that other departments have a position like this currently, correct? The one you're proposing? Yes. Or similar. Or similar. So like, for example, can you walk me through that? Like the public works department would have this position, fire department, how would it be, how would it be handled in different departments? I believe public works has the exact same position. The fire department, I, I don't know if they have the same exact position, but they have a very similar position. Um, but I would, ha I, I don't want to say that for certain. I would, I would, uh, I would like to okay. chief, uh, chief Merweed. I, I, I don't want to say I something that, that is incorrect. So I, I know I brought this up the other day and I, I got more information, like I said, from Chief Sullivan just now and uh, and also from my own emails I've gotten and stuff. And I just uh, really want to revisit this. So I don't know if it's the time to make a motion to restore this position. I have a motion that's there. That we, close expenses? we close expenses, yes. Isn't salary a part of expenses? No, it's a separate it's positions. This is positions, yeah. Well, we have to ratify salaries so we're going to have to open it back up to do so I, I i believe we can just um we, we've approved everything else so this would just be a change to it for 
uh, for belts and suspenders, we could go ahead and ratify it as amended. I thought we were just lectured about an hour ago that we can go to any part of the budget anytime we want from a certain council person. I don't understand why we can't go to any part of the budget anytime we want right now. We can. Uh, I do think that it would be, though, just to be on the safe side, okay. once we amend the one position, we should probably approve again as a whole because there was a change. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. So what should I do? Uh, uh, if you'd like to make the motion, you can make the motion. I move. do. Thank you. Um, I have a, a combination with this, though. I'd like to um, ask the chief, um, would he be amicable toward maybe reducing the bicycle unit line by 25,000 to offset the cost of this a little bit? So it's sort of like a 25% on our, 50% on our side, 25% on your side in terms of numbers. I mean, I know it's a difficult line and I know you support all of your lines, but I was curious if maybe you'd be able to entertain possibly making that work or is there somewhere else I could possibly go to try to defray some of the cost of the $50,000 position? That's fantastic. Well, I think, like you said, I, I don't want to reduce any any line, um, but uh, this is a uh, an important position. It has worked very well since we put it into place, uh, and it has reduced the errors. And, and uh, is the streamlined uh, process has worked very well here. I, right. I, I would I would not want to I would not want to reduce it, um, no. but um, if that was one of the ways to um, keep that position in there. It's, it's all right, Chief. I was just looking through different line items. I know we visited that the other day. So I'd like to make a motion to, um, to is it restore or approve? What am I doing here? The, the language would be restoring, approving. I'm trying to make sure I do it right. I believe just to add the account clerk line or to fund the account clerk line at $50,641.55. Um, because of the-, the, the oh, Did we uh, remove it entirely? Ms. Wren, did you recall offhand? No, he just now moved the motion, so he'll need a okay. second. I'd like to make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Farmer. Um, so my my argument with this is, is you know, obviously, as the chief indicated, there's a lot of different duties that this responsibility is there. Uh, there's obviously bargaining unit issues as well, possibly. Uh, I just think that, you know, having the chief have this position will be helpful toward making the department run better, and I'm in favor of that. So that's my my take on it. So, thank you, Council Caesar, Councilor Wetmore. Uh, thank you, um, thank you for being here, Chief. My question is: um, since you are getting five new patrolmen, is it possible you could cut your overtime line one two four zero one zero one three zero? That would and pay for her salary, you know, by lowering that. I mean, I think that's a reasonable request. If, I, if I'm being honest with, with this year's and previous year's overtime, uh, any reduction in that account uh, probably would cause me to have to come back to the, to the council at some point in time. Uh, we should we should be about that 1.1 this year. And um, that was with um, uh, really changing the way we we do business to get it to that low amount. Um, I don't know if, if it's possible in, in the upcoming year to reduce it. it, it it's going to go, overtime goes up just based on the salaries going up. And I believe the increase in salaries through the collective bargaining agreement was two and a quarter percent. Um, it would be very difficult to lower that, uh, being honest. Um, uh, Throughout the throughout the year, with the one under concept uh, from the collective bargaining agreement, uh, lowering the bike unit, uh, you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to do it from there. But that that's something that we're, you know, it, we might be, we might just not be able to provide as many services or or, or have the bikes out as many as many times uh, throughout the year. I would feel more comfortable having it come out of that than the regular overtime account. And I'm, and I'm just being honest and realistic about what I think that number will be at the end of the year. I understand. I just thought maybe because we gave um, that you're going to have five new patrolmen that it could be reduced by the 50,000. But, um, you know, if you feel you can't, that's okay. 
I, I, I think I can reduce the bicycle because with those extra officers, um, they're going to be, they're going to be placed in a uh, community and I can have them on the bikes sometimes uh, on regular, on regular time rather than overtime. So I think if uh, realistically I, I could take a, a, a hit there um, and I'm just being realistic. I don't think I, I, I don't think I could reach that number um, realistically. Okay, so you think though that if we reduce that by fifty thousand, that you might be able to accommodate it through the um, their daily routine that when you know when it's populated on the canal line. I mean, I really think that's important too. We we, we are definitely going to make sure that we provide some coverage of bicycles on on the canal line. The the obviously the uh, community really really wants that. Um, there, okay. There's been a lot of push for that and, and and I think it's needed um but like I said the, the more that's cut from it the the less I can the less I can do um but I if with getting the extra officers I'm going to try to do as much as I can on regular time okay I appreciate that thank you very much is that a friendly amendment council person Wetmore sorry yes I have a friendly amendment to um reduce the bicycle unit over time um, by 50,000, making it $50,000. Thank you, Chief. I accept a friendly amendment. So the revised. Thank you. Thank you. I accept a friendly amendment. So I guess the new motion is to fund the account clerk position with a reduction in the bicycle unit by $50,000. That's the uh, proposal. Is that, that voted properly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caesar. Mr. Farmer is the seconder. Do you accept the friendly uh, amendment? Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Wetmore. Councilor Ro Lewis. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, Chief, the position that we're debating right now, um, was this position posted anywhere I for believe someone to be in it right now i believe that was worked out between the uh the union um and uh the finance department mr jackson uh this transaction predates me uh so i it's difficult for me to say right now um, exactly how it transpired, um, but uh, the finance department is a central service agency. Uh, we serve every department in the town. And so Understood. if if uh, there's a, a necessity for a, additional attention in an area, then we will provide such attention. I, I am concerned that um, someone was just placed into this position and um, the position was not posted. I am concerned about that. Um, I think every position that I hear a grievance about, I wanna make sure those positions are posted, duly posted, so that um, everyone has the opportunity to apply for those positions. And so um, my concern is, um, I don't know if this position was posted or not. And, um, for me to hear that there's a possibility of a grievance for someone who was just a temporary fit into a position um, to hear that this is this, this position could be grieved if we don't fully fund this position. Um, give me cause for concern. I am fully supportive of all positions within department chief. Yes, um, this is a position I don't think is necessary. And then um, I'm not sure whether or not this position was posted correctly. Thank you. I, I believe, and, and Chief, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that this is a special circumstance and that it is a, uh, a temporary worker retiree who is performing the, the duties, uh, which, yeah, is, which is covered by the collective bargaining agreement, um, which is why it was, um, it was agreed to uh, by the union. I think this may be this is the first time hearing that the union has contacted the chief. Um, I think because this, that 
that is a temporary assignment uh, and uh, the end of it is is in sight. And so I think it may have been a defensive posture to say, um, hey, FYI, uh, this thing is coming to an end. And so what are we going to do? My understanding from what I've gathered from information, the union agreed to contingent on the idea of it being filled. That's my understanding of it as well, too, that they agreed to it as long as it was being filled. Is that accurate, Chief Sullivan or uh, Director Jackson? That I'm unsure of, um, but I think it was multiple people who retired, actually. Um, and the, the, it, it was a circumstance where the work needed to be done, obviously. Uh, payroll needs to be done, and, and this was worked out. And if I could, I'll just offer, if you don't mind, Ms. Ro Lewis, uh, from my union hat and from my discussions with union folks, what, what's happening here is bargaining unit work is being done by a non-member of the bargaining unit. So I believe that would be part of the basis for the group as well, uh, that if the, the chief seems to value this work and it adds a, seems to add value to the department, However, if it's continued to be done by a non-union person, uh, it, it is part of the bargaining contract that the work being uh, done is being done by, should be done by a member of the union. Um, so that's that's part of the grievance, I believe. Uh, Ms. Ro Lewis, further? Uh, you're, you're muted, Councilor Lewis. I hear and I understand, nevertheless, in order for a position to be in a union, re, to, be, to be honest with you, that position needs to be posted in the town prior to that person, prior to anyone being placed into that position. If there's a temporary employee in that position, that temporary employee has to now become permanent prior to applying for that position. That's how that works. And so for someone to grieve a position and they're temporary, you have no standing. Ms. Rulos, I, I don't think it would be the person grieving. They can't. But it would be the union grieving saying the town of Hamden, specifically the police department, is violating the terms of the contract by having work that is specifically to be assigned to a union member being done by a non-union member. It's part time too, right? It's not union. It's part time position right now, being doing union work, correct, uh, Mr. President? I believe so. Yeah. And by a by a by a by a recently retired individual, and the contract specifically specifies uh, that the uh, retirees can work on uh, an extended uh, temporary contract post retirement. I'm bothered by this one because I know I'm not, you know, I'm not, I know you cannot, you cannot grieve a position unless you're in the position. If the union choose to grieve it, they're not grieving it based on the person that's in the position. They're just grieving it based on the position. So there's no one in the position as yet. I think they're grieving the work that's being done by the non-union person. It's a part-time position, not a union position. And they're grieving the work that's being done by that person. Yeah. Got and you. and and from what Chief said, uh, I I certainly I'm certainly not aware of an active grievance. I think it was a warning shot that uh, should uh, should there be an attempt to do this work outside of the four corners of the contract, the union is paying attention. Um, but right now, there is no violation of the contract. Mr. Jackson, I believe is 100% correct. You still have the floor, Ms. Rolos. Mm, okay, no, I'll, 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 I won't walk away from it. I'll just um, think about it a little bit more. Um, but at the said time, I think the conclusion that has been drawn by the town itself is wrong. It's wrong. Um, but I won't argue it anymore. Um, I'll just leave it, but I, I know it's wrong. Thank you, Ms. Rolos. Mr. Farmer.
Thank you, Council President. Um, I, you know, I, I guess my first question through you, Council President, to you, is there a timeline on this or is this something that we could make a, a, a zero line item and come back to you and get better understanding from our legal counsel? There seems to be a bigger issue going on and I wanna make sure that we get the adequate advice uh, uh, and understanding of the nuance of this issue through you, Council President. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the timeline. Uh, Mr. Jackson, would you be able to speak to that? Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, probably um, as important for Chief Sullivan to opine on it. Um, when you do, when you have a temporary retiree working, uh, there is a series of hours, wow. series of days that are set out in the contract that they are eligible to work. And I think the intention uh, was to spread those out to get through the end of this fiscal year. And so this new position uh, that was proposed would be available at the beginning of the fiscal year as a permanent position. And, and, this, and this may help Mrs. Lewis. I think the timeline of this was just like Mr. Jackson said, it was, it, it was to get through the end of uh, the fiscal year. The agreement was between, I believe, the town hall and finance, that's how we were doing it. But July 1, if it gets approved, the position will be posted accordingly and then and go through the proper steps. So the, the position will be posted. Um, but I think the agreement was, and, and, and I could be wrong, I think that's what they're grieving. Part of the agreements would be that they agreed, the, they agreed to do this with the caveat that at the end of this fiscal year, the beginning of next fiscal year, it would become a permanent position. And if it did, be, and if it does become a permanent position, then they would post it accordingly. Does that does that clarify things? Um, I, do I still have the floor, Council President? Uh, yes, you do, Council Farmer. Thank you. I, I yeah, I. I I guess it would be great to get clarification. This seems to be a much bigger issue and I'm frustrated that the administration did not put this on our radar before as we have had issues with labor disputes in this department before um, uh, and, 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 and has cost us money. So I am frustrated after ratifying an issue, we are almost back into an issue and not even knowing about it. I am beyond frustrated. I just want to put that on the record. Um, I, I, I guess, D Director Jackson, uh, you spoke about this before, but now that there's more nuance, I, I want more clarification. This position, so the work in this position was being done before by whom? There is actually two two people doing these positions and two employees retired. Um, this is one of the um, employees that retired that is doing the part-time position right now. My understanding is that the agreement was that they would do it part-time until July 1st, and then it would become a permanent position when it became a permanent position at that point, the position would be posted accordingly. But that would also doing require the school? council to make it a permanent position. Correct. Who, who was doing the scope of work before the retired position? The two retired employees were, do, was, were doing the, uh, the work. Before them, who was doing the work? Them. There were two employees doing the work. They both retired. 
one took advantage of a, a piece of the union contract that allows you to come back as a retired worker for a specified period of time in a specified uh, number of hours. And so that is where we are right now. Should that work or should that retired employee expire that time in those hours and the town funds the position, it would be within the four corners of the job description of account clerk that exists and has existed for decades. So uh, I, I actually, I, I think the issue has been clouded. There is, there is no grievance. There is no, there's no current grievance. Yeah. Um, there is no violation of contract. Uh, there is no uh, a current labor issue. What a clarification. I, I think that my wording in the beginning was probably a little um, misguided. I, I, if I made the indication it was a grievance already, I apologize. My, my comment was basically there's, there's a possibility of one with the way it's being handled. And I, so I, I do apologize if there's any type of lack of clarification on that. That's not what I meant. So I just want to make that identified under my point of clarification. Thank you. I, I guess... So we are creating a position, we are filling a position or we're creating a position? Filling a position. So we're fill, filling a position. So we had someone doing the work or two people doing the work, they retired and the jobs were not posted. Am I incorrect in anything that I just said through you, Chairman? I I I would I don't know what the right answer is. I, I don't even know if this is a parliamentary in question, but I, I do feel that we should table this item, even though we're in, in tabling. I, I, I feel that we need a legal counsel because if we make the wrong vote, and I'm not sure what the right vote is, but if we make the wrong vote, there surely will be a grievance, right? Um, so I I don't know, but I I I I, I am concerned uh, and disappointed and frustrated with the administration once again. Uh, through you, Council President, I I'm not even going to ask any other questions. I'm, I don't want to understand. So so if I can, I if, I, Mr. Mr. President, if I can put on yeah. my commissioner of late my old commissioner of labor hat, please. There is, there is no grievance. A grievance can only be filed if bargaining unit work is being done outside of the contract. That is not happening right now. If the position, if the council chooses not to fund the position, it will not be happening because we will not be able to hire anyone. Uh, there really isn't there really isn't a pathway for labor action on this. We would just have to absorb the work through the finance department and the police department, as we do whenever we shrink. That is the way that this would work out. There's nothing nefarious. Uh, there's nothing hidden. Um, we are as transparent as we can be on this one. A retiree said, uh, said I understand that you're going to need this work to be done. And even though I'm retired, I'm going to come back part time and help you out and bridge this gap. And that's allowable under contract. And that's what's happening. It's not, it, it happens frankly, more often than, than you would expect, um, because we do not have the mechanisms for things like transition. Because you can't have two people in the same seat. So when somebody leaves, they leave and then somebody comes in. But if there's nobody coming in, 
they, there's an opportunity to extend their service even though they're retired. It's a, it's, it's a fairly common practice. It's not terribly complicated. It conforms with MIRA, the Municipal Employee Relations Act. It complies with uh, 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 all of the, the contracts. Um, and I, I just feel like we got, we got caught on a side road here um, that frankly, we didn't have to get caught on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jackson, Councilor Bonadies. Thank you. I just want to clarify: where is the um, bicycle OT right now? the The department request was one hundred. Mayor put in one fifty. We dropped it back down to one hundred. Correct. So that would mean we would be cutting this in half um, to fifty thousand. You you are only getting three patrol, not five. So. With the three patrol, are you going to be able to provide the services that um, it, the, the community is asking for with only three patrolmen and $50,000? We would, we would not be able to provide a, as much of that service if we had the full amount that was uh, requested. So, um, how would you say you'd be able to with on street time do some and on what's left in the overtime the, the 50,000 in the overtime to to provide adequate safety for how many miles is the canal line nine miles nine I was gonna say ten but it's nine miles um if you feel comfortable I, I don't want to cut I don't want to cut that line if you're unable to do that because I don't, I don't want to cut that line either. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to support that. So thank you for that information. Just the point of clarification, Councillor Bonadies, I believe it's 9.3. I don't want to uh, lie. So just that point of clarification. I'm sure you've ridden the whole length of it too, Justin. <laughs> um. Very good. So are you all set, Councilor Bonadies? Okay, Councilor McDowell. Thank you. I appreciate us refocusing on on uh, on the, the matter at hand. Um, I uh, can I get clarification on the motion because I th this seems to be two items, right? Yes. The motion was to reduce the bike unit OT line one two four oh one dash oh one three two by $50,000, uh, the argument or the, the point is, is to be able to find the money within the department budget to fund a $50,000, 50,641 account, account clerk position. Okay, I am likely going to make a motion to separate the question. Um, I just want to- My original motion was that, by the way, uh, was just a position, but I entertained a friendly amendment. So that's why I was added. No, and I totally understand. I just, I don't want us to lose somebody on one thing because of another. I, I don't know what the right thing to do is here. Um, uh, at the same time, I, it seems that this position is avoidable at this time. Um, I, we, we hear about grievances or potential grievances quite frequently and at, it, at some point, I mean, we have to, we have to, we have to just realize that it is our job to negotiate on behalf of the town. Sometimes unions are going to take us to task, and that's their job. Their job is to represent their members. I, it's our job to represent the town, right? And and regardless of whether we're we're you know in favor, whether whether you know, I, I I'll speak for myself. I am I am. Uh, broadly and boldly in favor of collective bargaining and in, in favor of labor in favor of unions. Um, at the same time on the council, it's our job to negotiate on behalf of the town. And these provisions in these job in these in these collective bargaining agreements have gotten out of hand because for decades we failed to do that. We have failed to two things, right? Number one, negotiate aggressively on behalf of the town and get good good terms for the town. But also, we've failed to negotiate on good faith and constantly come back for concessions or alterations. 
because we cannot live up to the terms in these units in these uh, in these agreements. So you know, I think that that needs to be said. Um, refocusing on the position, I, this is completely avoidable at this time. I understand it is difficult. I understand that there is work that needs to be done. Um, this is an avoidable and and forgive me, but Director Jackson, there is an addition to uh, finance in the in the payroll department, the payroll part of that department, as it is. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So I mean, if we're talking about we have to be more efficient, we can't. We have to get away from. Forgive me, like all of us, I am tired, and and articulating my thoughts is becoming more arduous. So forgive me for that. Um, I, like uh, all departments, I would ask that this department think critically about how they can share resources uh, to be more efficient. If we're at, if you've already added the position into the finance department, uh, the extra help is there. I don't see the need for this position. I, I can understand it would be convenient. Um, but we have we have to be careful and we have to be judicious and i think we have the ability to do that here i'm not going to make a motion at this time to separate the question it seems that there's more conversation and i do not want to disturb that conversation um i think it would also be more efficient to have the conversation and then separate and have two quick votes so i'm going to let conversation continue without impeding on that thank you thank you council mcdowell council Ro lewis Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Rolos, I think I jumped over Ms. Yeah, you jumped over Councilor Horst. My apologies. It's okay. Um, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on Councilor Bonadie's um, inquiry. Um, you know, I'm, I really want to see us have more officers on the bikes. And I'm really concerned about this cutting the overtime of the, the bike. Um, I think this position should be in the police department, but I really don't want to see the cutting of the bike overtime more than we've already done. Uh, we already cut it a little bit, which I think was a good thing to do. Um, but you know, the community has really spoken that they want more community policing. And it's my understanding that the data from studies have shown that this is one of the best ways that community policing can be done is through walking and biking. And I wanna make sure that we're able to support the initiatives that the chief and the department are going forward on in terms of community policing, as I've said before. So I'm not supporting this uh, based on the cutting of the, the bike over time, but I do support the, the position um, as, as has been discussed. So I won't be supporting this motion, thanks. Mr. Horsley, would you, are, would you consider making a motion to separate the item as Mr. McDowell suggested before? Sure, I'll make a motion to separate the items. If, is that all I need to do? Second. Oh, seconded by Ms. Shoemaker. Uh, so we have a motion to separate the items, discussion. Uh, seeing that I'll call for the vote. All in favor of separating the items, please indicate by saying or showing aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. I'm seeing three in opposition, Ms. Renta. Exactly what I have. All right. Uh, the items have been separated, so we have an item on the floor now, which is to uh, fund the and add the account clerk position. Um, I also did in the intervening time communicate with um, human resources, if uh, or personnel, I should say, uh, if the position is added, it will be posted. Um, so it wouldn't be just filled, it would be posted. Um, so it's just one piece of information. Further discussion on the motion to add the account clerk. All in favor, please indicate by saying or showing aye. Aye.
Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Um, one second. We'll keep the brain on point. Let's see the it, opposed. It'd be okay for you to put up your roll call. Yeah, Go thank on. you, Brian. Thank you. Councilwoman Baez. Councilwoman Bonadies. Councilman Caesar. Yes. Councilwoman Klaus. Councilwoman Dolan. Yes. Councilman Farmer. No. Um, Councilwoman Gary joined us towards the end there. Uh, Councilwoman Gary. Councilwoman Horsley. Yes. Councilman McDowell. No. President McGarry. Yes. Councilwoman Rowe Lewis. No. Councilwoman Shoemaker. Gotcha as a yes. Mr. Weber is gone. Uh, Councilwoman Wetmore. Yes. Six in favor, six opposed. It fails. Can you read the names of the opposed, please? In favor? I'm sorry? Request to, uh, to know the names of the people who voted in favor and against. Yep. Uh, Caesar, Dolan, Horsley, McGarry, Shoemaker, Wetmore in favor. Opposed were Baez, Bonadies, Klaus, Farmer, McDowell, and Roe Lewis. Absent is Alston, Gary, and Weber. Thank you, Ms. Renta. Welcome. For cleanup purposes, we still do have a motion to reduce uh, the bike over time by 50000 Any discussion on that? Seeing all call for the vote, all in favor of reducing bike overtime by 50,000, please indicate by saying or showing aye. Aye. I'm seeing four in favor. Opposed? Nay. I'm seeing six opposed, Miss uh, Miss Renta. Well, then I'm not. I don't know who I'm missing because that only equals ten. And if there was four in favor and six opposed, I'm abstaining. So generally, if there's um, individual abstentions, okay. Miss Wetmore is abstaining. Okay, so that's still eleven. So somebody didn't vote. Should we do a roll call? Yeah, I guess so. Roll Excuse call. me, I I need to vote yes for the count clerk. That was my. Desire. I'm sorry, I'm getting bombarded with phone calls here, seeing as how Monday's the tax deadline. I am a yes for the payroll clerk. Uh, Can we do a roll call vote, please? On, wait, what? We're, oh, we're on. So we have Ms. Bonadies, you're suggesting that uh, you, you're miscounted for. That is correct. I did not think my vote has been counted. It has been counted. You voted no. I I am a yes yeah. on the account clerk. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a 10 minute recess and I'll contact our parliamentarian because ordinarily I would say all we need is someone from the prevailing side to re has to reconsider. But there was no prevailing side because it was a tie. So it fails. So the top, so the fail is the prevailing side. Oh, actually, you're right. Yeah, it does fail on a tie. Okay. So, Miss Bonadies, you can has to bring it back. I would like to bring it back. 
Should we finish right. We're in the middle of this other vote, though? Should we finish? Right, yeah, let's finish Point that. Thank order. you. Point of so order. We have a roll call vote on the motion to reduce bike overtime by 50,000. Point of order. I'm I'm fine taking a vote on this for now, but I would like a ruling from the parliamentarian whether there is a prevailing side in a tied vote. Yeah, I think I think that'd be interesting to see. And uh, I do think we need a little break anyway, so we'll do that. Uh, but uh, let's move on or have a roll call on the bike overtime. Uh, the motion is to reduce bike overtime by 50,000. Uh, let's have a roll call vote, please. Councilwoman Baez. Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilman Bonadies. No. Councilman Caesar. Pass. Councilwoman Klaus. Yes. Councilwoman Dolan. No. Councilman Farmer? Yes. Councilwoman Gary? Councilwoman Horsley? I'm sorry, I'm confused again. <laughs> Oh, we're, this, we're having a roll call on the bike over. overtime reduction. No, yeah. thank you. No, okay. Councilman McDowell. Yes. President McGarry. No. Councilwoman Roy Lewis. No. Councilwoman Shoemaker. Councilwoman Wetmore. No. Uh, Councilman Caesar. No. Four in favor, eight opposed. It fails. Okay, let's take a quick recess. I I do find this kind of, you know, the, the crazy wonky nerd part of me thinks this is interesting. So I'll, I'll contact our parliamentarian, uh, see what's up with that. And um, uh, it's 9.19. Why don't we come back at uh, 9.30? We're in recess.
Was that for me or Mr. Jackson, Councilperson Worsley? Both of you. <laughs> I'll wave to Mr. Jackson as well, too. What is uh, that? Game? Yeah, good, because I, I try not to look at the screen. <laughs> Who's waving? I'm like, I wasn't sure if it was me or you, but I guess she's going with you, uh, Scott, you know? Everyone. <laughs> so, how much more stuff do we have to do? Austin, Valerie, what, what do we still have? I'm not exactly sure what comes up after this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Motion to adjourn? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> What an idea, what a concept. <laughs> Motion to adjourn.
Okay, and we're back. We'll give folks a minute to uh, get back here. We are out of recess at 9.36. Uh, folks back. Okay, uh, so we did have a consultation. I just sent around uh, to everyone uh, an opinion from uh, Attorney Gruen. It does state that, um, well, uh, Ms. Bonadies is about to make a series of, of maneuvers that have been checked out by Ms. Gruen, our parliamentarian. Uh, Ms. Bonadies? Thank you. First, I just want to apologize for being distracted. Um, when you work all day, you get home at 5.30 and you get right on this meeting. There is no time to conduct family business or phone calls. And I apologize for being distracted. And I thought I was voting on whether or not to separate the two. Uh, motions. And so I apologize first off to my colleagues for just being distracted and taking a phone call that was important phone call. But as, as a result, I was on the prevailing side of a vote um, and the tie resulted in a, in a fail. So the fail is the prevailing side. So as a member of the prevailing side, I'll be making a motion to reconsider the vote. And I need a second. May I have a second? Second. Can I find the vote for everyone? Yes, we will. We will when we get through to the, um, we will read the president will uh, reread the motion. Um, we need to vote on uh, the, the whole body, I believe, votes on the motion to reconsider. Yeah, the vote on the floor now is a motion to reconsider. Uh, the count clerk position. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, my apologies. I, oh, I'm sorry. We've, it's like a re re vote because we voted on this before. It's a right, it's a motion to reconsider as Ms. Bonadies voted um, erroneously. Okay, and we had already eliminated it, so now we're re re voting. We're, the vote right now is to reconsider the vote to um, add the account clerk back in. <laughs> yeah, it's a re motion to reconsider or re re vote, however you right. like. So this vote is to reconsider, it needs a simple majority to pass. This vote is to reconsider the um, account, the vote for the account clerk position. Councilor Farmer? Uh, just a, a, a point of personal privilege. One, if we can get uh, this clarification to us at some later date. It's uh, in your mailbox right now. We have it. Great, thank you. Uh, and then I, will, I won't even ask my second question. I will look at the document and see if it answers my question. Thank you, Council Farmer. Council McDowell. Apologies. I'm still working my way through this document you sent us. Is it a simple majority or does it require an additional? What's the threshold for a successful motion to reconsider? Simple majority. Thank you. Mr. Caesar. Thank you. I um, want to just first of all um, say I want to thank uh, Attorney Gruen for being so diligent. I know last night I was a little hard on her in terms of not being here and uh, not answering questions. I, I was wrong on that. I obviously um, thought differently when it comes to parliamentary being present. So I am sorry about that to Attorney Gruen. I do want to thank her for getting this uh, response very quickly to us and having our answer here. So I do apologize publicly for my uh, my, my comments yesterday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caesar. Uh, so the vote is a vote to reconsider. All in favor of reconsidering, uh, please indicate by saying or showing aye. Aye. I'm seeing nine. Opposed? Opposed. Abstentions? <clears throat> All right, the motion passes. So we are reconsidering the motion to add an account clerk. The items were separated. The um, overtime has already been voted on. So this is to vote on adding the account clerk. Just a point of clarification, the last motion you made was to
the last motion that was made was to Mr. Farmer? Yeah, I'm asking consider. a point of clarification on what was the last motion. That was the motion to reconsider. Yes, that was a motion to reconsider. Now we are reconsidering the vote on adding the account clerk to the police department. Ms. Klaus? Councilor Klaus? Yeah, I just said, I just want to say that um, even though I voted uh, to reconsider this, I know that now this vote is not going to go the way that I wanted to want it to. But also, um, I realize that sometimes we make honest mistakes and I would like to be afforded the same courtesy if it ever happened to me. So. Thank, Thank you, Councilman Klaus. Yeah. Councilor yeah. McDowell. Uh, just procedurally, I want to understand, are we repeating the the last vote that took place or are we voting to, I, I recognize that we already voted to reconsider, but the vote, so now the vote is the same exact vote that we already took. It's, it's, it's identical, voting yes and voting no has identical yes. results. Thank yes. you. Yes. And the motion should be repeated as we're going. Uh, the motion on the floor is to add the account clerk in the uh, police department positions. Why don't we do a roll call just to make sure we have this all nice and neat. Councilwoman Bonadies, or I'm sorry, Councilwoman Baez. No problem, no. Councilwoman Bonadies. Yes. Councilman Caesar. Yes. Councilwoman Klaus. No. Councilwoman Dolan. Thank you for a yes. Councilman Farmer. Farmer. We know he's here. We'll come back. Um Councilwoman Gary, I don't think she's. Councilwoman Horsley? Yes. Councilman McDowell? Yes. President McGarry? Yes. Councilwoman Roe Lewis? No. Councilwoman Shoemaker? Yes. Councilwoman Wetmore? Yes. Councilman Farmer? No. Uh, Councilman McDowell? No. Seven yes. Five opposed, it passes. Okay, and we had already uh, voted on the um, bike overtime, so we're back to our original, which is the, well, actually no, because we read open, so that is all. Um, we have reached the end, Ms. Bias. I would like to take a point of personal privilege the last time that we met and talked about this budget, we made a decision to increase the chief position another $10,000, as well as giving $10,000 back to the stipend line or allowing $10,000 to stay inside the stipend line that would have been expended at five. <clears throat> I have a very serious concern that this kind of move has opened us up to a discrimination case. Looking at the director positions that were provided to us um, of non-bargaining unit employees, those folks who are in the director position are, are there's a big discrepancy in there. I don't want to go too deep into it, but it's scary looking at the numbers and seeing such a disparity. 
What uh, clarification? It's five thousand dollars, not ten. It's right. okay. So overall, there is a big disparity between the the average wages of one group of people versus another group of people as described to us in our non-bargaining unit spreadsheet and with the modifications that we have made. So I'm fearful that that will open us up to discrimination cases. And that is the point I'm making. Thank you, Ms. Pies. And I'll just speak to that myself for a moment. I do, I, I do not like for us to make be making these decisions on salary. I just don't. Uh, I also, you know, it's very uncomfortable because here you are as a council person wanting to support your department heads, wanting to be giving them the tools they need. And unfortunately, you know, it falls to us. So I did ask the uh, administration, I gave them some parameters. Um, so I am giving them till June. If they don't act, we can write it up and pass it ourselves saying, you know, that there has to be there has to be some kind of plan, some kind of uh, um, structure to the salary increases. We need to make sure that our people are compensated well, um, but also fairly and equitably. So um, this needs to occur. Um, it is very difficult for us as this body, even though we're a fiscal authority, to have day-to-day -day, um, interaction and know exactly what's going on. We all interact with, with different sectors, but uh, it is an executive function uh, to try and figure this out and it shouldn't fall to us. And um, that's all I'll say to that. Mr. McDowell? I was- I was by, if you Give me just one second, Mr. McDowell. I do think this is an important issue, so let's talk this out. But we actually, we don't have anything on the floor at the moment, but you know, so if we wish to speak to this minute, let's take a few minutes and then, um, so there, get some thoughts and then, uh, you know, we need to actually either do business or close up, but go ahead, Mr. McDowell. Uh, I, I would, I would like to, uh, propose that we, if we're going to have an executive session regarding the ice rink, I recognize that it might be different attorneys, but I believe that there is some liability to discussing these matters on the public record. Um, I don't want to open the town up to that liability. I agree fully with my colleagues' concerns, um, but I'd like to propose that perhaps we add this to an executive session. Um, I recognize that that does not solve the problem or 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 give us an answer prior to the end of budget season. Uh, so we are going to have to make a decision on this and reckon with that before Saturday or on Saturday. However, uh, I do think it is critically important uh, to the points that were made that we do discuss this and what liabilities might be opened up so that if necessary, we may offer budget amendments before July 1st, because that is something we can do. We can move the money into ENC, we can move more money out of ENC, whatever we need to do to limit that liability we have the month of July to do that before the budget starts going into effect and people start collecting paychecks on this budget. Um, so I would like to see an executive session on that matter prior to July 1st. Thank you. I should say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say prior to July 1st. I, I, I should say at least a few weeks prior to that so that we have a meeting where we- uh, I, I, get, I get where you're going with that, Mr. McDowell. I was just making a note to myself, like perhaps a special meeting or something because Thank, thank you. I mean, it would be June 21st, which is probably too long to wait. If we're going to have a discussion. I, I agree. So, anything else, Mr. McDowell? Thank you. Uh, Councilor Horsley? Um, as a scientist in a very male dominated field, I totally appreciate uh, Ms. Bias's attention to this detail. And I agree with her concerns about um, our department heads. I also appreciate that our department heads are, many of them are in very male dominated fields and uh, there needs to be initiatives that support um, gender equity 
um, throughout all hiring practices. This is something I have done more work on at Yale than anyone else in my department. Um, I do it actively all the time and I have a very um, keen eye to making sure that this happens. Um, I know that I probably don't get paid as much as my male colleagues and that's something I live with every day. Um, we know that women don't get as paid as much as men on every level of every job. That's just the nature of being a woman in this world today. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, to me, it's very important that we talk about these issues. And so I appreciate that Ms. Baez uh, brought it up. Um, but I do think that, you know, we have to also consider the effort that uh, certain people do and what that looks like. And, um, and so, you know, to me, the $5,000 increase wasn't a gender issue per se, but hiring practices are a bigger uh, question and, and that requires policy, et cetera, attention to detail that um, we need to insist on in other, other metrics. So um, I appreciate that Councilor Baez brought this up because it is eternally always an issue until we deal with misogynist behavior in our society. And so thank you very much for, for raising this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Horsley. Councilor Farmer. Thank you, Council President. Um, you know, the, you know there, there's two issues, right? Um, the first issue is that we're having it both ways, right? Um, there is the scope of the job, right? And then there's equity in that. Um, I believe that with different job descriptions between different departments, if we would stick to equity, we would not get into this concern about uh, discrimination. But as we are speaking on discrimination, I hope that we can be intersectional in, in our thinking and our frame of mind, right? Because pay inequity doesn't just affect gender, but there's a racial gap to that, right? And when we add those two things together, we see that black women get paid less, right? So I hope that as we're talking about equity and we're looking at these things that we're being cognizant of not just sex, but we're also being uh, cognizant of the intersections between those things if we truly want to have equity in the pay that we're talking about through you, Council President. Thank you, Councilor Farmer. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> Councilor Bonardese. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Council President. Um, I think we laid out the reason for the raise, um, the amount of people that are being managed, the all time uh, 37 year low staffing, the amount of work to get this um, uh, budget, I mean, to get, the, to get the department where it needed to be in terms of uh, accreditations, um, the added uh, programs that were brought, the extra hours. I don't know of any other department head that spends this many hours with us um, and after his normal working hours. And that was why the, the, the raise was proposed. It's not for the same job, it's for different jobs. So just because you're a CEO doesn't mean you make the same amount for every business or every corporation you work for. You may have a a billion dollar company versus a hundred thousand dollar company and you're both CEOs you don't make the same amount of money um this is we I proposed the raise the raise passed I don't know that it'll get us um I don't think we're going to be faced with discrimination it's not the same job um and and the only issue I think is parity and I think that's what you're worried about because that's going to cost us the math that that you went through last night or the night before they're all a blur now um, that it's going to cost us more money because we raised um, some someone's salary. We're going to have to raise down the line. Um, parity is something we're going to have to deal with because it's some of us believe in it. Some of us say it's not a thing, um, but each job is different. Each department head's job is different. Responsibilities, time spent are different. It's not all equal. It's not the same piece of the pie. The, the raise passed. 
Um, I don't think you anyone was on that's on the prevailing side wants to reconsider that, but uh, I'm open to listen to the rest of the discussion. But that was my reasoning for proposing it. And as I said, the motion passed. Thank you, Council Bonnies. Councilor Wetmore. Uh, thank you. Yes, I was wondering where we stand on this position. I mean, do the raises uh, go through until we have the executive session? I mean, you're talking having the executive session a few months down the road. Um, so I'm not quite sure where this whole thing stands. I mean, I, I think what we'd have to do, Ms. Wetmore, is um, it, it would take a little time to figure out uh, a way to address this situation. Um, and whether through executive action or through an ordinance by this body. Um, either way, it would take a little bit of time to look at the issue and figure it out. But we could do a, we could do a budget amendment, um, or as Ms. Baez said, just do some transfers. Um, well, a budget amendment might be the cleaner way to do it, but um, it would be something we would need to take a little bit of time to look at. Because Okay, thank you. I, I do think it's an issue, but it would take a little time to um, address. Uh, Councilor Caesar. Thank you. Um, chief Sullivan's been doing the job of chief and also doing the role of deputy chief vacant for about 11 months, I think is the number. So, you know, you look at the amount of work being done by him covering for his position as well as the deputy chief position. I mean, he handles animal control, traffic department, central communications, crossing guards, IT and town hall, just a bunch of different stuff along with having to handle the position of deputy because there's no there's no position filled yet which I still want to know why I think it has to be filled as soon as possible but my point is is that we definitely you know have a situation here where he is taking on more work than is usually done by a chief and I really think if you're going to be fair and equitable somebody who's taking on more work and doing more work should be able to be paid equitable for that situation so I'll leave it at that but I really think a five thousand dollar raise and a two hundred something thousand dollar two hundred million dollar budget really thank you Thank you, Councillor Farmer. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Council President. Through you, uh, we have we are having it both ways, right? Like we're having it where we're talking about parity, and then we're saying parity is not a thing. We're having it both ways where we're saying that we got to right size our government, but we also have to pay uh, the average rate, right, to respect the work we. We can't have it both ways. We have to pick one or the other. Um, in, 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 in the spirit of figuring out picking one or the other, I would ask when we have this meeting, uh, just first a point of clarification. You said you gave the administration a deadline of June, but you did not specify a date. Is there a specific date uh, that the administration is working on I'd like to see something brought to us um, for our June Legislative Council meeting, which would be the 21st. Um, cool. Now, perhaps, you know, that gets a little closer if we have it go through the committee first, but um, we should have something actionable for, well, let's say June 21st, and, but it might have to go on the July calendar. No, that that Community. that that makes sense. I just want to make sure, as we are holding ourselves accountable, that uh, we're being realistic with the administration, so that um, you know they don't come back to us and say, "Hey, we we didn't really get a timeline. This is unfair to us." So I appreciate you specifying that, so that we all know when we need to see something. I'd like us uh, uh, document requests seeing that this is coming up. Uh, just so the department head salaries uh, and also to do get parity, uh, 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 to, to get what parity would be and also uh, what towns we're using to come up with our assessments because that seems to change every other time. And I just wanna make sure that as we're using these assessments, if we're going to, because unfortunately, I feel we're going to have to do this. If we're going to make up our own assessment and the administration's not going to do this, despite being asked multiple times for multiple years, we should 
all come to a conclusion on what towns we're using and comparing and contrasting ourselves with, what their debt service is, how many hours those positions are working, and, 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 and what their budget is so that we can figure out how to right size and have that equity according to what our budget uh, allows, right? So I, I'm hoping that we can get those document requests so that when we have this meeting, we can put this to, to bed and to rest because we can't do both. We can't do parity and equity, not with the budget that we have and not with the mill rate that people wanna see. Uh, so I'm asking for these documents when we have this meeting I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this again. I should have said it the first time through you, Council. Thank you, Council McDowell. Just wanna uh, remind us again that we're supposed to be discussing positions, not people. Uh, and I also, uh, I, I strongly, and uh, we, I think we really should move on from this at this point, unless we're thinking about making a motion. I think we should revisit this in, a, in an executive session, but I do believe if we're talking about putting forward a platform or, or a procedure for non-union employees, I believe that, that that research and that that procedure needs to be put in place by an independent body. Because if this body is responsible for, and perhaps that's what you were already suggesting, uh, so forgive me if that's the case, um, but if this body or if anyone on this body is responsible for putting in place or developing that sort of procedure, I believe that we run into the same issues that we do by making the decisions that we do on the on the budget. So I believe it should be an independent party of some kind. Uh, I don't know if that's a private entity that we go out to bid for. I don't know if that's something we can ask the state or a regional like Scrog or, or perhaps CCM to do. Um, but certainly it feels like we run into the same conflict if, if we or anyone on this body does it. Thank you. Or anyone from the administration. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor McDowell, Councilor Byers. I just want to note that we're, like was said, we're supposed to be talking about positions, not people, but that's exactly what happened when we got that spreadsheet. It had folks' names on it and it made it very obvious what was happening. Um, I just want to also note that some folks are saying we shouldn't be looking at this. We made an argument for this position to get a raise, but I'm not speaking about this position that, or rather this position is an, ex is an exclamation mark to the point. It, this raise that was given is an exasperation of the problem that had already existed. I'm talking about averages, not just this position, averages and we can see the discrimination is there. So I'm not saying this position is the problem. I'm saying this position is the exclamation mark to the problem. And it's not about the person. It shouldn't be about the person, but looking at that spreadsheet, turns out it is about people. So I'm quite concerned about people pushing this off. It's being pushed off. So we don't have a solution tonight, but we sure don't have a solution tomorrow either. And that's concerning that we don't, we have a, a date that wasn't really set. We have folks that were okay with pushing this off to next one. Think about this, do an amendment later. It's just very concerning, very. That's that's it. I'm, I don't wanna talk about it anymore, I guess. Thank you, Ms. Fires. I mean, it is just gonna take time. I'm sorry, but you know. Just... Um, any further discussion? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn our budget deliberations. So moved. So moved by Mr. Sooner. I'm sorry, can I make a point of, I, th I thought there had to be a vote before we close the deliberations to pass what we already did. Or, or am I mistaken in both votes happen on the Saturday meeting? I, I believe that's Saturday. Yeah, because we have, we've gone through all our departments. I just want to make sure that, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to. No, we, we have a proposed budget. Um, I'll ask Mr. Jackson and his team to uh, put together the proposed mill rate and the, the costs. Um, and, uh, you know, ho 
hopefully we can get that out. I mean, you know, the public has been watching, but hopefully that information can get out relatively early tomorrow so people can opine. Uh, if we, we want to make any changes, we will we'll meet Saturday morning. Uh, we have a special meeting scheduled at 1030. Um, Thank you. And, and, and procedurally on that, our public hearing tomorrow at 6 p.m. And uh, there will also be another opportunity for public input at 1030 a.m. on Saturday prior to our final vote. That's correct. Kind of regular public input during a meeting. Just in case anyone can't make tomorrow evening. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Council Farmer. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, just two uh, points of personal privilege. One, I want to thank uh, our esteemed colleagues and department heads for taking the time out with us. Um, you know, none of us are paid for this work, right? Uh, it is a sacrifice to our families. It is a sacrifice to our loved ones. So I just want to acknowledge that and, and thank us for doing that work through robust conversation and dialogue. That is how we make the best policy. Uh, the second point of personal privilege uh, to our Muslim community members, just want to wish them a happy Eid Mubarak uh, and, and blessings into the new year through you, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. And yeah, it's always, uh, if this if this day falls on a, uh, on a school day, I always have to make our, whatever we do in my EL class, very, very light because uh, well, half the class doesn't show up. One more point <laughs> of personal privilege that I forgot. Happy belated birthday to uh, Councillor McDowell. Uh, I forgot to do it yesterday. Uh, but wanted to extend that and thank him for sharing oh. his birthday with us through you, Council President. Happy birthday, Council McDowell. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, happy birthday. Uh, further birthday wishes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I had to us. <laughs> Councilor Wetmore. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd just like to, to make another statement. Um, by the way, happy birthday, Brad. Um, <clears throat> last night we got noticed that um, we had to meet tomorrow night for the public hearing. Now that meeting was not scheduled and we got very few hours notice. I cannot make that meeting because I stuck to the schedule and the only day we had off was Friday. I was planning to come Saturday and I came to all the other meetings. I just find it um, difficult. I'm not sure that I'm saying it right, but I find that it's kind of unfair. I know we have to do what we're doing, but I think it's unfair that um, the people that have come to all these meetings are gonna look like we don't care in front of the public. And that really, really bothers me because I do care and I feel that um, it's just not fair. That's just what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Council. One more, Councilor Klaus. I just wanted a little clarification. So I know that the vote um, is scheduled for 1030, but on our schedule, it does say nine o'clock. Are we still meeting at that nine o'clock or? The nine o'clock time is if there are any additional changes we wish to consider after public input. Okay, so nine o'clock on for us, nine o'clock Saturday. For us Got nine it. And I think it also might be nice, um, especially for Councilwoman Wetmore and whoever uh, does not show up, if we made a statement that this was a last minute change and that um, people who are absent, you know, don't necessarily mean to be absent. So I'll, um, I'll make sure I do that tomorrow. Yeah, it's been a trying few weeks. I've had a lot of my own issues and haven't been at all of the meetings either. And I, you know, it is, I think it's respectful for everybody to know that we all want to be here and want to do the work, whether we're on screen or not. So. Okay. Thank and you. happy birthday, Brad. <laughs> thank you, Jody. Yeah. Council McDowell. Thank you everyone uh, for the, for the kind wishes. I, I, 
blew out my candles and, and wished for Governor Lamont to begin reformulating the ECS formula. Um, I, I uh, do we have Director Jackson a uh, and and uh, fingers crossed this is the last time I speak this evening. Thank you all so much for your patience and for spending so much time with us over the past couple months. Um, Director Jackson, do we have a mill rate? Uh, we do. We do not at this moment. Uh, it can be calculated uh, early tomorrow. Um, it is in the neighborhood of fifty-two six four. Now, do we have? Was is fifty-two six four? Is that what it was end of day yesterday? Uh, no, that's adding a little bit based upon uh, the addition of the account. of okay. It's an estimation of yesterday. Uh, it, it, yeah, so yesterday it was fifty two, six three and change. So I'm just rounding that up. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I just think it's important for us to know where we are. I do believe there is still work for us to be done. I hope between now and Saturday, we will all go home. We are home. We will all. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not you. I appreciate the extra effort that you put in. And I see Chief, uh, it looks like Chief is, it goes into the, uh, well, I know Chief, I've seen you in the office in the past. Maybe, I don't know, I can't tell if you are right now or not. But uh, appreciate the extra effort that you all give by, by reporting to your offices um, and doing so safely. Thank you. Um, uh, so uh, perhaps we all sit down at the desk that we've spent way too many hours at over the past two months and we think about where we may have some room to budge. Uh, I do believe there is some room. Um, I perhaps uh, between now and Saturday, I don't know if it's the will of leadership to check the pulse of the council. I, I my biggest fear is uh, that we do not pass a budget. Um, I hope that that is not the case, um, but it has happened in the past. And I do believe we've done a lot of good work. I don't fully agree with this budget, but I think this is one of the more honest budgets. And I say this with caution, it's one of the more honest budgets that we have seen in my time on the council. Um, so I, I do believe that we are slowly headed in the right direction. I would not like to see us revert back to the budget that we received in March. Um, so I, again, if leadership has the ability to perhaps check the pulse of the, of the membership, um, see what kind of mill rate folks are, 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 what is our goal? And perhaps we can explore some options or entertain some options from members, the administration, whoever, to get to a number that not only we can pass, but perhaps the administration is willing to sign. I would like to see a budget not come back to us on a veto again. Um, be nice if we could move forward together on the same page. I understand that there are things that we all hate about this budget, um, but we are all going to have to answer for things and decisions that we've made over the last two months. It'd be nice if we could do that together. Um, hopefully there's a path forward there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Horsley. Um, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on Councilor Klaus's uh, comments about um, the pandemic. And um, one of the things that I've been doing every week with my lab team is um, we talk about what we're grateful for. Um, because in, during the pandemic, it's really hard to get through what things are changing and the annoying things that are happening. And um, I, found, I found that gratitude has really um, grounded me and my lab team. And I just wanna say that I'm really grateful um, to this group of people. And even though that we've had our disagreements, every, probably every one of us um, and myself, I really appreciate um, the effort and all that you've shown up to do for the town. And while I don't necessarily agree with all of the votes that we've made through this budget process, I do think that through consensus, we've built a better budget than what was presented to us. And I appreciate that. And I will be supporting what we've done. And I just really do think that grace 
is what we owe each other all the time, but especially during this time of this pandemic, because we hopefully won't see another one in our lifetimes and our children won't see another one if we have children. And that is just the nature of being stressed as a population. And thank you, science. It's the one time I'm thankful to be a scientist in this world. And I hope you all get vaccinated and all your friends get vaccinated because we will all be together very soon. And I just wanna say a lot of gratitude to this team. And I'm sorry if I've been snarky or not showed up as I should have been. And, but I appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. I just would remind, we haven't voted on the whole thing yet. We haven't. <laughs> a little while ago, we're, we're not in the end zone quite yet, but we're close. Ms. Shoemaker. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to echo some of the uh, ideas that, um, you know, we may have some changes to make on Saturday morning. Um, and uh, I like the work that we've done. I don't agree with everything. I've never agreed with everything in any budget I've voted on. Um, I wouldn't expect to. Um, but um, it would be nice if we could uh, adjust the mill rate down some that's what our that's what i'm hearing most of all and of course part of the reason why it goes up is that each of us has different priorities and so um yeah i'm in leadership i would be interested in knowing uh, hearing from people talking to people about what your comfort level is where you think we could make some adjustments uh, what I would not like to do on Saturday morning is start at nine o'clock, get to 1030 and find out that we have to go till 230 in the afternoon before we can finish that. So let's don't do that on Saturday. If we have ideas about this, let's unearth them before nine o'clock Saturday morning, collect them and be expeditious so that we can stay on schedule on Saturday because we've done enough wrangling and long hours. And on Saturday, we should not be wrangling for long hours. Uh, but yeah, I, I wanna echo Councillor McDowell's sentiments about that, that there might be other things that we can do to adjust this budget. So, and I'll look forward to that. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Councillor Shoe Shoemaker, Councillor, well, well Mr. Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Rowe Lewis, but Mr. Jackson, you have a point of information for us? A uh, point of information. Uh, the scratch spreadsheet and it has to be validated um, in response to Mr. Uh, McDowell's earlier question. Um, uh, the the mill rate uh, could be as low as 52.56 based upon uh, the activities. Uh, and so we just need to validate that and compare notes uh, with the council office to make sure that uh, we haven't missed anything. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Roe Lewis. Uh, and actually, by the way, uh, Chief and uh, Officer Rodriguez, if you guys are, you know, you don't have to stick around. Um, we do appreciate your time. And this, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying you got to go, but if you would, if you would prefer, please, you know, go, uh, go get some, some sleep. I just, Councilman, uh, Council President, I'd just like to thank everyone here. Uh, thank you for everything that you guys do for our community. Um, you guys have a lot of tough, tough decisions to make and you guys put a lot of time into this and you guys don't get the credit that you deserve. Um, but I just want to thank you for everything that you guys do. Uh, I want to thank all the men and women that work for our department. I'm very proud of them. Uh, over the, This has been a tough year with COVID and, and everything in law enforcement. Uh, I'd also like to um, give my prayers and condolences to the fire department community. Uh, yeah. I've been in touch with Chief Merweed and Chief Alston. Our department has offered and given them assistance. Uh, they've had a very tough week. Um, and I just want to make sure that the, the FD community, which is a great community here in Hampton and New Haven, um, that you know we're behind them 100%. And thank you for everything that you do. Thank you, thank you. Steve. Uh, Councilor Lewis, I saw your hand was up and went down. 
Yes, um, it's up, it went down. It was basically to um, talk about the same thing that the chief just talked about, so down. Thank you. Councilor uh, Horsley. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we'll, we will before Saturday get the actual mill rate for the budget that we've deliberated so that we can understand where we are prior to Saturday. Uh, yes, as soon as uh, we're able to reconcile with the council office, uh, we'll get that to you. Um, we've also started working on the budget ordinances. Uh, so you'll see a series of documents uh, coming through tomorrow. Yeah. This attorney Gruen has uh, put together the budget ordinances, but the numbers are not yet plugged in. Uh, so we are preparing for, uh, for Saturday. Any further thoughts for good of the order? Safe travels, but on a budget. Well, <laughs> well, there's that, but we also do need a motion to adjourn. We're not going to recess. We'll move. Second. All right, moved and seconded. All in favor of adjournment, please indicate by saying or showing aye. Oh, yeah. Aye. <laughs> Opposed. <laughs> And at 1023 summon quite possibly the longest meeting meetings. in the history of Hamden. <laughs> Good night, everyone, and thank you to our attendees for sticking it out all this time. Rest well, everyone. Have a good night's sleep. <laughs>